What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Batman News Weekly. This is episode 195 in year four. And we got a lot of news to talk about this week because there's a lot of stuff going on with Brave and the Bold. But none of it might happen because the writers and actors are on strike. Well, the yeah. actors are going to be on strike. But yeah. uh, directors are like, we're making money. So fuck <laughs> it's up. so fucked up, <laughs> dude. It's and, and I know we'll get to it because it's one of our topics, but it's so fucked that like Hollywood would be like, hey, directors, we haven't taught AI how to direct yet. So yeah. why don't you like we've like we've seen in The Mandalorian, they've con they constructed an actor to look like a very young Luke Skywalker, Mark mm -hmm. Hamill and used AI for his voice. Yeah. So like. They know they they can recreate actors mm -hmm. at any time uh, yeah. if they have the rights to it. So they have no problem, you know, with actors going on strike either. But for the fact that they're like, hey, directors, we will still make a good deal with you guys. Yeah. And then everybody else is fucked. I, I would be shocked if likeness rights aren't improved over the next 10 years. Because with the the idea of AI being able to put anybody's face into anything is kind of crazy. And I was talking to, because um, I do have my Patreon has like a secret channel in the Discord for anybody that subscribes to my Patreon. And we were we have an AI bot in there. Well, we did, but because AI makes you fucking pay for all this shit. We had an AI bot in there. And we'll have like random discussions about AI sometimes. And we had one recently talking about how like, how I was saying, I was like, if you want people to change AI, you just need to go like make laws about it. Uh, you need to fucking put all of these politicians in just bad situations in, in, in AI. And I'm not talking about like AOC because I feel like people would do that, like, oh yeah, hot girl, fucking put her in a bad. No, no, no. I'm talking about the old, like, white, fucking 90 year old <laughs> guys. Like, you need to put them like kissing men and doing all this other shit because they're gonna be like, oh. Rah, I've been you seeing know? a lot of that though. I've yeah. been seeing a lot of Trump no, but like, DeSantis. You, like you need to start like protesting outside with it. You know what I mean? Like really yeah. putting it out there because they don't know what the internet is. Like yeah. they don't, they don't, they're not fucking on Twitter. You know, somebody's Dude, running. I, Twitter I, I know how much the, the boomer generation knows nothing about the internet. When I saw some clips of the court case dealing with TikTok, Yeah, that was horrible. In some of the questions that they were asking the CEO of TikTok was yeah. it was mind boggling, dude. Like, yeah, it was absolutely wild. Yeah. So like, um, yeah, I'm just very curious on. I mean, it, I, I just don't see how you would replace directors, to be honest. I just don't because it's just like a manager. Like, yeah, you know, they're managing the thing. Granted, they have a vision. They do all this kind of stuff. You can try to replace uh, writers if you want, but like you're not going to get the nuance of like why a certain thing is important. You know what I mean? The well, flashbacks, all that kind of jazz. So I have some friends. They have a new segment, and I think I've mentioned this before. They have a new segment in their podcast. Whenever a movie comes out or a movie is about to come out, mm -hmm. they basically say, hey, chat GPT, like what is this movie about? Or like write this script or whatever, and or a synopsis because the script would be too long. And so it basically writes the synopsis of the movie, and then they ask, "Hey, what's the post credit scene?" And then they say, "Okay, when the movie comes out, which one was better, Chat GPT or the actual movie?" And it's mm -hmm. a really fun little segment that they do. But they uh, the other night they put in, "Hey, Chat GPT, make a Batman Beyond." live action movie featuring michael keaton mm -hmm. and chat gbt literally just took the synopsis of the show and created a scenario that is exactly an episode of the show oh, really? and then and then made a random post-credit scene that's yeah it. yeah so yeah. it has it it's very limited. It's very, very limited. Well, the same thing goes for artists as well, because I am currently in the process of trying to get a bunch of thumbnails made for a video I want to do. And I have uh first of all, like you go to Fiverr to usually get work pretty cheap, right? It's from everybody from around the world. Like if you're in America and you're paying somebody like in India or Indonesia, like the dollar is very different, right? 
people in America might be like, oh, you're buying something cheap. But I'm like, dude, it, the dollar's so good for them. They're probably making a lot of money. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. And, um, or I should like, yeah, it's so big for, I don't know, whatever, you know, currency rates. Um, but I've been trying to get some AI people to try to make me some thumbnails. And God damn, it's fucking difficult. Like, I rather, I wish I had the money to just pay an artist and yeah. be like, because I'd rather, I'd rather pay an artist. But I'm like, I got to make 40 of these things. So it's just like, holy shit. Um, and I, it's been the most difficult. I literally had somebody cancel on me yesterday because they couldn't do it or something like that. that because sucks. the AI, it's like, you can't just be like, change the, you can put like change the hair make it red or whatever but you got to put in all this other shit to make it happen and it might not come out right and then you got to render it and you gotta, it's like all this shit where an artist can be like boop, 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 boop. granted they're gonna take a time <laughs> but they're gonna do what you want right they're like okay, yeah you want this bam um especially digitally digital artists can just go in there and like they can just do the hair and you're like i don't really like the hair and they're like okay and they just erase it and they fucking or they mo remove the layer and do new hair like you yeah. know so, um, yeah, AI's got a long way to go. It looks pretty great right now for what it is, but I just don't see how you're going to replace certain things. I will say, though, man, how are because I, I saw this thread last night because I was on Twitter. I was like, maybe I could find AI artists on Twitter, you know? Um, but I came across this thread of somebody complaining about, like, they're like, how do you know what art is real anymore? Like, because it's so much like AI based. If you pay somebody nowadays to create you a piece of work, I think you're going to need to start having people record their process. Be like I need yeah. video as evidence of you actually doing that. If I'm going to pay you like thousands of dollars, you know? Well, and like the, this goes back to the NFT thing, right? Mm -hmm. About how like, Oh, how is this valuable to me? Yeah. And that whole argument. And then we've seen in NFTs plummet. But for some reason, we still have companies using NFTs as yeah. incentives. DC. Like I got I literally I just got an email from DC saying that they're having like a new like Superman NFT sale thing where it like it bundles all of the Superman movies along with an NFT or whatever. Yeah. And it's it's so weird. It's so weird. Yeah, I don't I don't understand it at all. Uh in the in the AI chat <clears throat> in that AI chat that we had, I found out some guy bought got married to somebody through an nft and yeah what yeah they they like own the rights to this person's marriage i guess or something like that so they That's married wild. somebody in another state and the guy was all like that girl's totally getting banged out by other dudes like there's no way there's just some random guy paid a lot of money to marry a girl through an nft but they're not married like i'm like what the fuck and, uh, and like he said it was like a hundred thousand dollars or some shit and i was like Fuck. bro i was like i need people like that in my audience that can just throw away a hundred thousand dollars like what the hell um that shit was crazy but anyways let's just hope that we never have to have a batman movie made ch by chat gbt um because right now with the strikes that are happening everything's getting delayed the batman 2 if you thought you were excited to see it in 2024 or whatever it ain't happening anymore because I think they already said it's delayed six months. By six yeah. months. It is absolutely wild. I actually got the uh, uh, the article here. Yeah. It says, uh, for a lengthy film delay amid the WGA strike, it says the Batman 2 appears to be the latest major project to hit a major setback following the writer's strike. Uh, gripping Hollywood as highly anticipated superhero feature suffers a significant delay. It says here that uh the it was scheduled for october of 2025 mm -hmm. six months that puts it uh november december january february march that puts it april of 2026 yeah so that whole idea of having both superman and batman in the same year mm -hmm. um of course guns uh superman is still uh scheduled for 2025 i think that's that's not happening anymore um yeah. Of course, uh, he did. I mean, he finished. He finished the the script. Yeah, but I mean, I don't think he can legitimately work on it at all if they're needing to have anything done. But and because we we're not in the industry, so we don't know the ins and outs. You could still be planning for all of that, though. You just because one, if let's just say the script is done, right? 
that has nothing to do with the writers guild from my understanding because the, the thing's done you can start planning like oh yeah we're gonna need you know 20 pas we're gonna need blah blah, blah. like oh I yeah, like yeah. but, all but i mean more but i mean more so like they start filming Mm -hmm. And then something isn't working out and they're like, oh, what if we rewrite this? Oh, we can't do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I mean, Gunn could, I feel like, if he wanted to. I mean, technically, the Directors Guild made a deal, all right? He's a director, <laughs> all right? I, mean, I think he's fine. Um, but yeah, I think Gunn doesn't want to step on anybody's toes, so he's not going to do that. But I, I would be shocked if, like, nobody's just doing nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think the planning is still happening. I think that they're trying to plan for like, yo, if this thing, I think that's going to have to be one of the sacrifices, right? Like if you are a writer's guild or you're in the actor's guild, the moment like in the deal, they're going to be like, okay, we're going to give this to y'all, yada, yada, yada. Y'all are fucking working tomorrow. Like whatever delays are happening, Fuck. you're fucking working <laughs> tomorrow. Y'all have been off this whole time. You know what I mean? That's how I would be. I would be like, no, you're fucking working tomorrow. We're starting Superman tomorrow, bitches. And like, <laughs> because you got to make up for lost time, right? And so like, um, I that's just kind of how I would be. Um, because fuck, like, what's well, already been a month, two months? Like, uh, it's it's been oh shit, I just saw. I think it started uh, in early May, right, or mid May, maybe. Yeah. So at we're the getting end of near May. a month. Yeah. Um. Now, granted, I, I respect writers and I, I want them to get everything they need, but it's at the same time, I want my fucking movies. You know what I'm saying? I don't yeah. want Transformers again. Okay. We tried to go watch Transformers 7 and Dude. <laughs> movie experience, I've, I've, man. I've heard so many mixed things about that movie, mm -hmm. but like the audience score is through the roof already. Really? Like, it's, like people love the movie. Yeah. Uh, critics don't like it, of course. But audience loves it. So. Yeah. I, you know, I, I think being deprived of going to the movies for so long has just made me want to watch whatever in the theater. You know, I would yeah. never go fucking pay for a Transformers movie. <laughs> uh, we were going to go. We've been, me and Clay have been watching a movie. It feels like every week. Almost. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so like I got free tickets for a Monday showing of Transformers and I was like, well, we could go. But I, I just, I don't do free screenings anymore. And like, I don't do the we last. Talk about the, the last screening? well no not yet and that was going to yeah. be in the t conversation for flash that we do have mm -hmm. but uh the last free screening that me and juice went to was yeah. literally right before covid uh for yeah. harley quinn and uh the birds of prime movie yeah, it was like two uh, weeks before covid it was for me a horrible experience and oh, i remember it, it it very much showed in our review of the movie mm -hmm. we later due to the lack of content of covid watched the movie again reviewed it and and were a little bit easier on the film yeah but it was a bad experience yeah and so juice told me hey i got tickets to so go see transformers uh i was like okay let's go and he's like it's a free screening so we'll probably have to get there early um I'm not leaving until an hour before. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's not really gonna how that's not how it yeah. works. Um, but we got there and the line was long, and we're like, yeah. there's no way. There's absolutely no well, way. Well, it's because they put it in a little theater. I think yeah. if it was one of the bigger theaters, we would have been fine. Yeah, but they were 100%. like, eh, we're gonna do it in a little one. And I figured we were getting a bigger one because screenings usually happen in the bigger theaters, from they my usually do. my experience. Yeah. So that's kind of what well, I was like, an hour. Like, who the Because I got the tickets day of. And I'm like, there's no way. Like, there's no way it's going to be filled. Because I was expecting, like, a 200-seat theater. Yeah. Um, and so, like, yeah, it was pretty crazy. But I did, as Clay would be able to confirm this. I set up expectations. I was like, I'm not leaving an, an hour early. And if this movie, like, the audience sucks, I'm leaving. Like, yeah. I set that up. We We got there people in line were not rowdy so i was like okay i think this is fine there was a there was a couple in front of us though that uh god damn <laughs> i feel bad for that guy like a lot of people talk about how like men are abusive and stuff and they are but holy shit there was women, this women can be abusive as well yeah there was this woman who was not having it from her boyfriend just, don't touch me like she didn't want to fucking sit near this guy which they probably didn't no, in that theater uh in that theater, no, because we got in because mm -hmm. you had to get a wristband also. And they're like, oh, this is the 185 seat theater. Yeah. But uh, there's some reserved. 
and some seats were actually broken. So we're down yeah. to 174. And we got the wristbands and they said like 173 and 174 yeah. or something like that. We're like, oh shit. Yeah. And so when we got in there, uh, they're like, raise your hand to see if you have a op- if you have an open seat. And there's like maybe two on the complete opposite ends yeah. of the theater. And we're just like, yeah, we're out of here. Yeah, we're like, you give our, <laughs> our shit to the next people. Um, but yeah, we, we just went and bought expensive waters. That's all we did. That was oh our, God, yeah. our Monday Monday night. But yeah, speaking of that, so we're going to dive into this topic that was, this kind of popped off in the Discord a little bit, a little bit of discourse going on in there about the Flash sequel already being written. I cannot believe that personally. I don't know where this is coming from, who the scooper is that's saying this. I just, I cannot believe that that is true. That a sequel This is, is via Variety. So oh. it's not a scooper. It, it is Variety. It says okay. here, um, let's actually look. It says in the article, this is pre- it's a pretty lengthy article, but it says, although Warner's never announced that the studio already has a finished sequel script from uh, David Leslie Johnson, uh, uh, McColdrick, who did Aquaman. If a part two is in the cards, the script is said to have guest stars Keaton's Batman as well as Sasha Kaye's Supergirl. So, like, we have not seen the Flash film, and that was when no. I was going to bring up the fact we got invited to go see a uh, a screening of the Flash uh, mm-hmm. at the time of recording this yesterday. Yeah, we had a invite uh, and this was actually uh, from WB films associated with DC. So because of our partnership with the comics, we actually got this. Mm -hmm. Um, We had decided not to go and juice was like, I got a bad feeling about this. Yeah, Uh I, 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 I don't think we should go. And this was, we had the invite before the whole transformers thing. Yeah. And I was like, Oh man, like, are you sure? Like, like we could i could go early you know if Mm -hmm. if you need a ride i could even pick you up and it started to dawn on me like okay the last time we went it wasn't all that great the theater that we're going to isn't all that great either yeah so like theater it it was starting to add up and we're like yeah probably not and the big thing was one thing that we got uh via the invite or what i found out after the invite was the full film will not be released until Monday, June 12th. Yeah. We were going to see the movie June 7th. So we were going to get the same cut as CinemaCon. Mm -hmm. And Juice made a big point for our first experience. It needs to be the full experience. Yeah. So we decided not to go, but we are still going to the fan event on the 12th in IMAX. Yeah. And I'd rather just have like go balls to the wall for my first experience. First experience is huge for me because granted, as much as we didn't like birds of prey the first time, the second time made it a little bit better, but I was like, it wasn't, it wasn't great. Like every, a theater is always going to be the best experience. Right. Yeah. And I'd rather go to the best experience possible. And I, you know, I don't want to harp on, on people being, or I don't want to be like, Oh yeah, the fan screens bring the worst people. I don't want to say that at all, but I've been to enough of them that people that go to fan screen or like free screenings is what I should say, kind of treat it as like this was free. Who fucking cares? Like, why are you so mad? Like, if if we're being loud or whatever. And I'm like, bro, because I want to experience the movie. Like, and I don't know. And I think people that pay for their tickets, granted, people that pay for their tickets are also assholes in theaters. Um usually are probably there for a reason right especially if they're like paying for imax stuff they're like i want to watch this movie in the best way possible so i'm really interested to see um it on monday but yeah i was not excited i was like a fan screen i was like free screenings i was like i don't know man because when we went to transformers there was a shitload of kids a shitload of kids yeah and they were kind of like just being loud and stuff too and i'm just like oh no i was like is this gonna be for flash too and this is this is what makes people very worried about the Flash. Mm-hmm. You made a very good point. They have let a lot of people see this movie. Mm-hmm. There are now, I think, in the thousands that have seen this movie already. Yeah. Now, again, it's not the full movie. So, you know, 
they they're still needing to go back to the theater, spend their money to see the full length movie. Mm-hmm. But there is a lot of people who have seen this movie already. Yeah, I'm convinced there's already probably a full recorded, like leaked version of the film that are in those screenings already online. I yeah. I almost guarantee it. Yeah. Um, but like a lot of people are seeing this as like, okay, is it not that good? And is that the reason why? They're wanting to convince people, hey, go see this movie, go see this mm-hmm. movie, and then have the word of mouth push this. Yeah. Um, and I think that could be a good thing and a bad thing. It could be a bad thing for the fact that, hey, they don't have faith in their movie and it's going to bomb. But I also think it's good because the the fan reaction and the overall talk about the movie has been booming. Mm-hmm. And I think the word of mouth is going to give it legs. Yeah. Uh, well, the old Hollywood... Um telltale sign of a bad movie was that they never did screenings for it so that's true um they do have a lot of faith in this movie they've gotten a lot of big people that are you know well recognized in hollywood to actually say nice words about this movie so even cbr i saw the headline of their review for the movie and it was like surprisingly like you know surprisingly good with an emotional yada yada and or some shit like that and i was like okay i don't want to hear anything else um but yeah, I had to go on a blocking spree because Clay told me that the uh, end credit scene already leaked or some shit. Yep. I went and blocked every scooper that I know of um, because, yeah, I'm not trying to. I First of all, I just got to say, if you're a scooper that happens to listen to this podcast, fuck you for retweeting the, uh, the, the fucking end credit scene. Like, and it was, it was, again, it was my time to shine hello. Mm-hmm. And they fuck were them. like, they they retweeted it and they're like, see exactly how I said it would be, and basically confirming their scoop or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, admit all the other scoops you've gotten wrong. My time to shine, you bitch. <laughs> I I can't stand that scooper. I swear, uh, there oh, nobody's gonna return in James Gunn's universe. Uh, it doesn't seem like it. Um, yeah. but yeah, I don't know, man. I I have a detaste for scoopers, and I've said this multiple times now, but uh, I've done a complete one eighty. But yeah, I just think that's kind of like a bitch thing to do, man. Like if people are following you, and then just to retweet that, like I don't know, deserves that deserves some blockage for me. Um, but yeah, so talking about the Flash sequel, and you know, with the actual like possible um, Michael Keaton and Sasha Kaye being in the sequel, I just don't think that 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 had to have been written before gun showed up that's the only explanation i think that it was written before um because they also have the aquaman guy on there who apparently the second movie is horrible yeah Um, (laughs) i i think that it was written before but i do think and i did say this in the discord that if this movie pops off and it Mm -hmm. makes bukus of money Gun cannot just ignore that. Like he, like he can't. He could, mm-hmm. but I think it would be a little under, like underwhelming if he mm-hmm. did. Which is why I said, in the result of this movie, like I, I don't know how this movie ends. No. Um, the the post credit scene that my time or whatever, I like quickly just like I, I swiped and I didn't see anything. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, I just so happened to be scrolling downward and I saw the, the tweet before the video. And so I just like swiped mm-hmm. really quickly. Um, so I think that if this movie ends in a way that two things should happen, mm-hmm. I think that Barry should either be lost in the speed force due to this whole event and time traveling and all of that. And we have Wally West in the new DCU and have a reverse rebirth moment with Wally and Barry. Or you have Barry in an alternate timeline and then find his way back. Either way, he finds his way back. Mm -hmm. So that way you can have this movie still be relevant to the DCU if people really love this movie. Yeah. They can still say, like, oh, this matters. Because that's what a lot of people are still going to say. Mm. This movie doesn't matter. You know, yes, it's a good movie, but it doesn't go anywhere. Like, there's going to be a ton of that. Mm-hmm. And I still think movies can have, like, movies can be good on their own. 
Like, yeah, that that's always a a good thing. But there's so many people that have been, you know, freaking beat over the head with the MCU stuff. Then like, okay, every single moment of every single movie and every single show has to matter for future projects. Yeah. And because of that, I think that if this movie does pop off, I think Gunn should keep not not immediately say, hey, there needs to be a sequel now, but keep it in his pocket. Say, hey, you know, this is you have some stuff written down. We can we can dissect this script. We can make it work for the new universe. Easy yeah. as that. Yeah, I just don't. Um, I think having Barry lost in time is a bad move because you're you're just not expanding on the Flash universe. Like, are we not going to get you know his Rogues Gallery, which I think has some good characters in it? Uh, granted, I guess you could put them with Wally, but we already know that the Flash has been dealing with those Rogues Gallery before. You know be yeah. kind of weird to like oh yeah now wally's taking over um i don't know i feel like wally you should he should be introduced teen titans you know like that's kind of how and, and that would be that would be the biggest thing right is like if wally is the flash in the dcu there's mm -hmm. no context for it yeah. so that would be a little confusing for people and yeah. that's i think that the the hiccup or the crutch that is mm -hmm. kind of like the the weakest link in my theory yeah. But I think it could work if they were to do it. Yeah. I, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm excited to see this film. I have been dodging this trailer so fucking hard <laughs> lately, man. I've been watching, uh, you know, Fear the Walking Dead on Hulu. They have the fucking trailer there. So I have to like mute it and be like, cover my eyes while I'm waiting for this damn commercial to finish on Hulu. Uh, they were showing it on Twitch a lot. So much to the point where I just bought Twitch Turbo so where I don't get fucking ads. I was like, you God. gotta be shitting me, dude. So, which, <laughs> look, I am a supporter of buying ad-free models, but I get Hulu for free, and that's the one ad thing. I'll just, I'm just on my iPad during the fucking commercials. But, like, ads are... Any, anybody that's ever been on Twitch knows that their fucking ads are horribly invasive. Um, so, I'll paying for Twitch Turbo is great, especially on YouTube as well. Um... But yeah, freaking I, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with the flash. I am excited to watch it, but um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I don't think Barry is going to get lost in time. I think that'd be kind of crazy. And I don't think Michael Keaton's going to be in another film. Um, I'm hoping brave and the bold is going to cast somebody new. I think they kind of already, I don't know. Did James Gunn confirm that? I mean, I'm pretty sure he said it's not going to be Keaton. Like he kind of threw that out there. Like it's going to be a younger Batman. He, so he said that it was not going to be Affleck. Mm -hmm. He said that his new Batman will not be George Clooney because there was all those rumors of like, yeah. oh my God, George Clooney is the brave and the bold Batman. He's going to be the Batman that's going to be in the Flash movie. And it's going to be like, that's how you, you know yeah. it's going to be the new universe or whatever. Um, I he, he confirmed that's not true. Um, so... I mean, I guess you could still play with Keaton, mm -hmm. but again, I think it's very odd that like you can't just say, hey, this and and, and it kind of ruins the movie a little bit, quote unquote, when you're like, oh, the sequel is going to put these two characters mm -hmm. in in the sequel. And and I'm just like, OK, does that mean the the plot is not resolved in this yeah. next movie? Are you going to force Barry to go to those separate worlds? And like, how do you do that? And it's just like, it, it it's kind of messy for me mm -hmm. personally. Now, do I want Sasha Kaye to be Supergirl in Guns universe? A little bit. Yeah, I still need to see her performance. But from what I've heard, people love her. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if you saw this, uh, Juice, but Sasha Kaye uh, traveled all over Texas including our city um, and was like at four different screenings. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Uh, so she has been doing a lot of traveling lately, uh, promoting the film. And I think that's awesome. No, yeah, that's dope. Um, I mean, I hope that she continues to be Supergirl. Like that'd be awesome, especially if people love her in this film. Um, but we'll have to wait and see on that. I mean, hopefully, I mean, four days, right? That's kind of what we're waiting on. Um but yeah, so I, I I would be shocked if 
if we have Michael Keaton as Batman continuing forward or being in a sequel, right? Unless it's Batman Beyond. It's the only thing I could think of. But is Batman Beyond and Elseworld at that point? Like, how far can you really jump in the future? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so I'm just curious on what would happen there. I think it would have to be an Elseworld. I mean, an Elseworld that's like, by definition, it's just not, it's happening on another world, but it's still that same Batman, right? Because you're mixing times. So you could easily have Michael Keaton be like, I'm going back to my time, you know? And when yeah. he goes back to his time, that's when he finds fucking Terry McGinnis. And I think that'd be kind of cool. And he's the perfect age for it. Like, this is the perfect time for him to be old Bruce Wayne in uh, Batman Beyond. So I would love that. But at the same time, I kind of, after seeing fucking Spider-Verse, I kind of want James Gunn to bring back that Batman Beyond animated movie that was supposed to be their Spider-Verse. And here's here's the thing. Uh, Gunn, one thing that we didn't really talk on last week when he had kind of said it in an interview, Gunn's number one favorite superhero movie is freaking Spider-Man uh, Into the Spider-Verse. Yeah. That's his favorite superhero movie. Really? I think he is going to push for that type of film at DC Studios, 100%. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I hope it would be the Batman Beyond one, but we were kind of talking after we saw Spider-Verse. Can you do a Batman movie like Spider-Verse? I, I don't think you can. Um, and the reason being, like, unless it's, like, almost the same, like, po plot points of this mm -hmm. current movie, like, I don't think you can. Because, like, spoilers for Across the Spider-Verse, three, two, one, the canon event mm -hmm. type of, like, breaking canon, it's a cool concept. Um, and for what they do in, in Spider-Verse, I think you could do that for a Batman, you know, regarding his canon and what, like, big plot points are in the Batman uh, mythos is yeah. could be really fun. But I, I just, like, I'm sorry. Because when you when you look at the voice actors and actors for Batman, mm -hmm. with Conroy not in there, I don't want it. Yeah, um, I'm. They will. On... They would probably still use like stock footage of like the animated series Batman. Yeah, but like without hearing his voice, like I, I don't. But think you I could want use it. stock footage of the voice. Because oh, so, he has so many lines, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, you could have him do I'm the Vengeance line, you know? Yeah. I'm Vengeance, you know, his classic lines. Um, yeah, I, I definitely think you would honor Conroy because he has so much audio work. Like, they, yeah. they, ha they have to have all those files by themselves. I don't know how his estate would feel if they're like, hey, you know, we want to, like, use AI to change his voice up just to honor him. Um, or, you know, would you feel comfortable with us just doing, like, old audio stuff, whatever? I'm sure that uh, they might be honoring him that way. But I'm not going to lie. When I finished Spider-Verse 1, I thought it was a great film. And then when I left, I was like, I don't know if I could write something that great. Like, I think that was awesome. But I want to try. And so I'm just all <laughs> like, I think that's kind of what it motivated me. I think a lot of people would just be like, uh, nope, can never do that. I'm just like, nope, I kind of want to try it. Um, and I would just be like, how would you make a Batman film like that work? Obviously, you can't do it exactly the way they did it here because it would just be a one. All the Spider-Man fans would be like, you're just copying Spider-Verse. Um, mm -hmm. Well, you know what, Marvel? All of y'all are fucking copying the Arrowverse, bitches. We did it first. And Stephen Amell would tell you that. <laughs> uh, I can't believe he said that. It's just an off a tangent. Stephen Amell got asked about the DCU and he was like, yeah, they're doing cool stuff over there. Uh, you know, I, I just want good films. But right now, they need us more than we need them. I'm like, bitch, where are you? What do you mean? <laughs> We're doing a wrestling show, like, on a network that nobody knows of? Like, bro. Like, or I'm pretty sure it's, like, on a random-ass, like, online network or some shit, right? I don't think it's, like, on no. FX or anything. I'm pretty sure it's on Showtime. It's on Show. Well, who buys Showtime anymore? I mean, honestly, though, that's yeah. true. Like, who buys Showtime? It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I don't know. I think it's just kind of crazy that he said that, but yeah, flash sequel. I don't think that would be the script that they're going to use. And I do think that they should make a Batman type spider verse movie. Cause I think that would be great. 
Um, oh, but it's on stars, on. not not Showtime. Oh. It's on stars. Yeah, that, even less known. Like I only knew of Showtime because they had Dexter. That was the yeah. only thing I ever knew on Showtime, and probably some naughty shows when I was like, younger. Um, but like for the most part, because back in the day, people don't remember that HBO and Showtime were channel 14 and 16, if I remember correctly. And like you would just flip through your cable and be like, oh shit, what the fuck? And then it was just like <laughs> wild west. You're just like, holy shit. Um, but yeah, anyways. Uh, so yeah, we kind of already talked about the Actors Guild going on strike. There's not really much more to add to that. Um, no, just so, that uh, they're on strike. They're, or they're going to strike. strike. The, yeah, they voted... Uh, with a strong 97.9 percent yeah um so just below what the writer strike did with 98 percent mm -hmm. um 97.9 percent of the tv theatrical uh or where it says uh are in favor to authorize ahead of negotiations of the tv and theatrical contracts um with nearly 65,000 uh yeah. members voting for the strike yeah Pretty crazy. Do you think everybody just hates that like three percent? Like you motherfuckers, you voted no, didn't you, bitches? <laughs> You're not getting hired in anything. <laughs> um, like it's just like, uh, and I'm pretty sure it's not even. I mean, because with oh man, when it comes to voting nowadays, everything is so fucking intense, right? Everybody, oh, yeah. you didn't vote for us, so fuck you. You're dead to us. And it's just like, I just want to work, man. Like, I just want my job. Like, I just want to work. Like, no. But what's wild about this is that. The news of the strike. This mm -hmm. uh this came out uh June I want to say fourth or fifth. Yeah. But it came out that they voted for the strike at like midnight our time. Like hmm. articles just like pushed out all of a sudden. I'm just like, yeah. why wasn't this out like during prime time that people could actually read this? Yeah. Like it's gonna be a hard like it's going to be hard work to make that tracking again mm -hmm. come the next morning or whatever. Um, but yeah, it, it was just, it was just super random when it, when it came out. Yeah. I just love the actors guild because the leader is Fran Drescher and I love Fran Drescher. I, yeah. I like love the nanny. It's such a good fucking show. Um, so yeah. So, you know, with all those strikes going on, Batman definitely going to be delayed. We already talked about that. Uh, which I'm assuming we also know. I don't know if we ever touched this up on the podcast. We mentioned that it was getting delayed, but the Penguin has completely stopped production. Yes, yes, so we did talk about that. That is uh, something that's there. But the biggest scoop this week, and we talked about it last week, and thank you everybody that watched the YouTube uh, video because it got over a thousand views. So thank you so much. Hit that subscribe button though if you're if you're listening to us. Um, that Andy Muschietti is to direct the Batman Brave and the Bold with Christina Hudson to write. This comes from Scoopers, which y'all know how I feel about Scoopers. And then they got kind of shut down, but then they doubled down on the shutdown. Yeah. And so, like, it's just like a an actually established place, which is Variety, right? Or Hollywood Reporter. So, that uh, Hollywood Reporter is the one that came out with uh, the... The clarification on it, but yeah. the original scoop does come from big screen leaks. Um, he said that the rumors are true. I've been told, and this was, you know, they were they were teasing it like mm -hmm. all freaking night. They're like, yeah, oh, you know, already. there was the bat signal. There was Chucky. We were all confused as of what yeah. the hell was going on. Um, and he was like, you know, what? I'm just going to drop it. So instead of waiting the next day, he dropped it um, like right before midnight. Mm -hmm. Saying, hey, the rumors are true. Andy Muschietti is going to be the one to direct Batman Brave and the Bold. Uh, and he said, uh, was said here, yeah. the rumors are true. Confirm that uh, Muschietti will be directing Batman Brave and the Bold. Muschietti is now the third director attached to the DCU projects, along with James Gunn and James Mangold. Now, there was a little bit of clarification um, with the Hollywood Reporter article mm -hmm. stating that multiple sources did say that this is in the works, but nothing has been confirmed due to the writer strike, and mm -hmm. nothing will be confirmed until the writer strike is over. Yeah. Now, to call big screen leaks like wrong on this, I think would be wrong because mm -hmm. hey, clearly he has some right, you know, uh, sources on this. Mm -hmm. Now, to say that it's a one hundred percent going to happen. 
we don't know how long this writer strike is going to happen. Yeah. Andy can't just be like, hey, I'm just not going to work mm-hmm. until the writer strike is done. Especially with the fact that directors are getting their way and everybody yeah. else isn't. Like, he's probably going to find some work. Mm-hmm. Unless Gunn says, hey, we'll pay you double if you just don't do anything until we're ready to start making Batman. Yeah. You know, which I think he could make that ruling because he's, you know, co CEO or whatever. Mm-hmm. But like, well, I'll ask you that question. Would you double down on Andy because of how like the hype of the flash mm-hmm. is success in the it franchise and everything else, just the stuff that you know of. Yeah. And an important IP of Batman. Mm-hmm. Would you tell him, Hey, don't work on anything else. Um, I, I mean, well, it's always going to come down to what the man wants, right? Like, yeah. I mean, it does. He want to, is he cool with taking some time off? Will he use that time to work on other projects like writing or whatever? Cause I don't know if he's necessarily a writer or not. I don't know if he, if he writes movies or if he's I'm just not entirely director. sure. So, um, yeah, I think that would be like, you're like, all right, well, I got to wait this out before I get to direct Batman. Maybe I'll use this time to do some other stuff. Um, cause he is going to be a producer on some other shows. I think he's going to be a producer on the it prequel. Yeah, um, yes, but so, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, it depends on how he views the Batman. Is that a dream job? Like for some directors, you know, it would be a dream job for me. So if somebody's like, oh yeah, just wait it out. I'd be like, all right, fucking cool. Yeah. I'll just write some other shit, even though I'm not supposed to be writing right now. Um, I'll be, <laughs> I would write my own shit at home and like, obviously I'm not going to pitch it to anybody or anything, but I'd be writing yeah. my own shit. Cause I, I, these writers are not fucking, they're not all on the picket line. They're not all not doing something. Like yeah. a lot of them are using this time. They're like, I'm not getting paid. So like, I'm going to write some shit. I'm going to write my ass off. And then once this strikes over and be like, boom, I got these fat stacks of like 10 shows. Like, let's fucking go. And yeah. if hopefully the new things are more in their favor. So if they do have these shows ready to go, then they're going to be like, I'm going to get paid, you know? So uh, to, to think that the writers are not writing right now, I would be extremely shocked. Are there some people in Hollywood that are probably that pure? Sure. Um, I just think it's dumb. Like, I don't, you know, everybody has causes they want to fight for. Sometimes the way you go about fighting for your cause is dumb. Sorry. It's just, it's how it is. And um, so I think it would be dumb to just not do any writing at all. So I would be shocked. But I mean, it really comes down to Andy Muschietti. Would, if you really want him at DC, if you really want him to do Batman, you play ball, right? I mean, they did that with Reeves, like right? Like Reeves, and this is one thing why I don't want to take the scooper for 100% factual when they're like, he's going to be it for sure. Reeves walked away from the Batman for a bit, and then he yeah. came back. So yeah. there's no telling that, like, Andy might be like, you know what? Because here's the thing. This is going to be the most interesting part right now. What if people hate the Flash? He might not want to do superhero movies again. Yeah. And he could be gone. And then what? Are we going to get a lot of people? Are, are all those scoopers going to backtrack? Probably not. They're just going to move on to the next scoop. That's what they do. Yeah. Um, I would respect scoopers more if they were like, hey, I was wrong. Like, this is my source told me this and they were wrong. But when you do that on the internet game, people just automatically think you're always going to be wrong. So I understand why they don't do it. But I still think I'd rather play the moral game and be like, eh, hey, I was wrong here. The scoop was bad. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I would prefer Muschietti. Um, Cause I think he works good in ensemble casts. I think his vision for Batman from just what I've seen in the trailer, the flash looks pretty cool. And I would be curious to where he just focuses on Batman and not flash and how epic it could be. Yeah. Um, but the only thing is, is I hope he goes more to the practical side a little bit than a lot of CGI. Cause I'm thinking he's using a lot of CGI for Keaton. It feels like. So I'm hoping the newer guy, they'll probably go a little bit more practical. Still throw in some good epic fight scenes and stuff, but yeah, I don't know. And I think for one, like you have, I think the Batman Brave and the Bold, because again, we have said you need Batman in the title. Um, I think that it will be a very large budget movie, but I think that he is using heavy CGI because he's given the money for it and it's the Flash movie. Like it's it's both that play into factor with playing heavily with the CGI stuff. Yeah. Um, when 
especially I think you're going to have a lot of notes from James Gunn. I think James Gunn is very much in the know uh, because he's been doing this forever. He's like, hey, this is what everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. We need to change something about Batman, and this is how we're going to make it different. And so I trust that both Andy and Gunn will make a good Batman for us. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of what I'm hoping. I mean, you get, you give me some good action with Batman, and I'll be fine. Um, granted, he, some people don't know how to write Batman, and I hope that doesn't happen with the director and Christina Hudson. Like, I don't know if she knows how to write Batman, you know? We'll see yeah. in The Flash, um, because, like... And I, I'm hoping in Hollywood, a lot of people would be like, Batman would never do that. You know what I mean? I hope it's a little bit more strict with him. Like, he is that IP where they're just like, you can't do that. Um, granted, some people hate that. They're like, oh, why can't he? I'm like, because you don't fucking read the comic book, you bitch. Like, that's not what he does. Um, so, like, I don't know. But I'm interested to see it. Christina Hudson has been hit or miss in DC. So... she, she it's It's been off and on. Mm -hmm. um, you know reception wise it's it's been mixed with of course harley quinn and the emancipation uh birds of prey and the emancipation of one harley quinn um then she did batgirl yeah. uh work that we've never seen before mm -hmm. but people said that it was so bad it was almost cw like yeah. um and then people just love the flash so it's it's literally a roller coaster for her uh writing career mm -hmm. but i think there's a reason why like people love bumblebee where she yeah. like is i think where she got her rise to fame in hollywood mm -hmm. um and i think there's a reason why gun put her in you know the round table that he has for for his dc universe so yeah yeah uh it'll be very interesting to see um but i mean we'll, we'll find out in four days when we go watch the flash if uh, she's up to it because if she drops another dud like i just have no faith in her after that so we'll see what happens. Um, but moving on from that, I think that's all the entertainment news we got. But what is this comic news? Kelly Thompson writing a Birds of Prey book coming out later well, this year. Before, before we go to that, uh, one thing that we did, another conversation that started in the Discord. Oh, uh, yeah. Was a, a rumor says that Bill Skarsgård is being eyed for a DC movie that is not Brave and the Bold. And I think a lot of people say not Brave and the Bold because... A lot of people see this actor and because of his fame of it, mm -hmm. want him to play the Joker. That's yeah. something that you would absolutely love. It's the only thing um, I want. I, I can't remember what I had said. I think he would make like a good Maxwell Lord. I mm. think that uh, due to his role in John Wick Chapter 4, I could see him maybe doing the KG Beast thing. I think he would need to get a little beefier. Yeah, but no, KG Beast, like Batista would be a good KG Beast. Yeah. You know? Um, but I mean, everybody also wants him to be Bane, though. But yeah, I don't know. I don't think um, he's just, he's, I don't know. Like, there's very rare times when you just see a casting and you're like, no, that's that person. You know, yeah, and Joker just dude, he can do the awkward smile, which is crazy. Yeah, and we haven't really had been had somebody been able to do that with Joker. You know what I mean? Um, he can also make his eyes do that weird thing. Like he could probably do that with the Joker if he wanted to. I just feel like he would get into the character so well that yeah. he should be. You know what he should do? He should be a character that isn't anybody. And then he like he was the Joker the whole time. Is what he should do. He's the joke. He's the Joker in disguise, essentially. And uh, because that is from the Endgame storyline, where he's pretending to be a doctor yeah. in uh, in the Endgame, and then he you know it reveals he reveals that he's a Joker. That'd be kind of cool. It'd be a different way to take it. Because like imagine, imagine like having the Brave and the Bold. Right. Let's say we're getting a trilogy out of it, and in the Brave and the Bold you have this random character that's maybe working at Wayne enterprises or he's working at like maybe Leslie Tompkins hospital, right. Or Arkham. Like you can do that. And then in the, at the end of the second movie, it, we, it's revealed that it's Joker. And then Joker is the big bad for the third movie. Well, like the, the only thing that I would be a little annoyed with, um, if Bill Skarsgård played 
a minor role that would end up being a bigger role. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you remember this, but in the um in the dark night, I can never remember his name. Um freaking uh the guy in the very beginning um that Joker ends up killing, um, who was at the bank. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, really famously known for uh prison break on Fox. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a big name actor. I just can't yeah. remember his name. Um, but like I remember he was in the trailers and everybody's like, Oh, he's playing this guy. Oh, he's playing that guy. Oh, he's doing this, he's doing that. And then he literally just had five minutes or less than five minutes in the film in this yeah. one scene that didn't really really didn't mean anything, uh, you know, in the case of the whole film. If you see Bill Skarsgård, you're like, he's got to be somebody. He's got to be yeah. somebody. That's the only, that's the only thing that would kind of irk me. Uh, but but well, but that one guy didn't become to be anything. So and my my first video ever when it came to doing the uh, YouTube shit was a video about Scott Eastwood being Nightwing in the Suicide Squad. Oh yeah. <laughs> so like he didn't turn out to be anything. Would have been a way better character for him. But, yeah. like, yeah, I don't know. I, I think you let people... Because, you know what? You would get the chatter of, like, I cannot believe that they're just... Bill Skarsgård is this random character, right? And I think you you play it up to him. Like, it'd be like, why did you take such a minor role in in this universe? Like, you could have been somebody else and be like, you know what? Like, And you just have him play, be like, telling him, like, Dude, just go out there and be like, sometimes you just want to do something simple. You don't want yeah. a hardcore thing. And somebody, you know, they were like, hey, you want to play this character? And we we're like, sure, why not? Um, and then just also say some other shit and be like, I couldn't be on set that long. I wanted to be a part of the movie. I love Batman. So now I could be this minor character. And then fucking have him come out in the third movie as Joker. Like, that would be holy shit. Like, that'd be awesome. Um, you could also kill him in the first movie if you wanted to. Like, pretend. And then he yeah. comes back, you know? fucking uh because joker never dies it seems like so i think that'd be kind of cool but uh yeah i don't know we'll we'll see where it goes i don't think i mean he's just perfect for fucking joker in my opinion i don't <laughs> i don't want anybody else um but yeah we'll see what happens but i don't I, I just don't know who else he could be if they're ironing him for something else yeah like i don't i don't know a lot of people have said uh the uh what's his name uh alec holland for swamp thing Mm, maybe but like i mean are they he's just gonna be a voice at that point though yeah unless you're gonna do a bunch of flashbacks all the time i feel like alan holland needs to be like somebody different though i don't know if scars guard is perfect for that. i need like somebody i don't know i feel like with swamp thing you can get away with being like an odd looking fellow like i feel like scars guard is like odd pretty if that makes sense like he yeah. has a unique face, but I'm talking about like that weird guy that looks like um, the Mad Hatter from Doctor Who. Like he's oh, got yeah, he yeah. like he's got a very unique face. I'm like, give me something goofy like that for Swamp Thing, and then he becomes Swamp Thing. You know what I mean? Um, because he's a scientist, you know. And, you know how many like fucking fancy ass looking Tom Cruise scientists do you see in movies all the time? Like true, but I mean. It's more so what he looks like in the comics, right? He he looks uh, like a true. well-mannered individual. Yeah. And then he becomes the swamp thing, which is like yeah. this disgusting thing. Yeah. True. If you wanna if you wanna go off of that, I guess that makes sense. Um, but at the same time, Hollywood doesn't care about the comics anymore. So like, yeah. you know, they change whatever they want. So it is what it is. Uh, so yeah, that's all we got. But this birds of prey uh comic book. You posted yes. a photo of this. Uh, this looks weird. Yeah. So uh, this, of course, uh, Birds of Prey is usually a uh, Batgirl centered or at least featured uh, type of team. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was like, you know, we'll add this into the news. Um, Kelly Thompson, uh, famously the writer for Captain Marvel over at Marvel uh, Comics, uh, is coming over to DC to write Birds of Prey, featuring uh, the leading lady herself being Black Canary. She has been revealing a character that's going to be in the lineup every single day. 
Um, after Black Canary, the next day, she mentioned um, uh, uh, Cassie Orphan. Kane, yeah. uh, Orphan, um, as part of the Birds of Prey. And then on the third day, she revealed Big Barda as a uh, featured lineup character. Um, and I posted a picture of them all lined up. It's literally their their lineup uh, covers. So mm -hmm. when you go to the com uh, comics, you can buy each one of these covers that has like them just featured uh, on the cover. And next, like Canary and Batgirl, Orphan, that looks normal. That's yeah. just like the street level stuff. It's okay. But standing next to Big Barda, it is so odd. Yeah, it's so out of the ordinary. Now, Kelly Thompson is, like I said, writing Captain Marvel right now at Marvel Comics. Mm -hmm. And she has been known to write larger teams in that book. Mm -hmm. Right now, if I am not mistaken, she has uh, a kind of team, a, a ragtag team of Gambit, Rogue, Psylocke. Jessica Cruz, Spider Woman, mm -hmm. Hazmat, and Captain Marvel. That is six characters. That is a just league within itself. Yeah. So I think Kelly Thompson will be adding more characters to this Birds of Prey. Um, who do you think is gonna make the lineup? Um uh, Harley Quinn, probably. Um I could see that. And then let's see who else is another big female birds of prey character. But I mean, they, that's just so random with the fucking big Barda there. Yeah. Um, oh, that the chick from uh, Doom Patrol. Uh, uh, the elongated one. Uh, the, oh, uh, one that grows or stretches. Does I she stretch or name. grow? I don't know what she does. She grows. Yeah, her. I would say. I think okay. it's to be a ragtag group of people. Um, it's just I've, so weird. Barta is I've, so weird. I've seen a lot of different people put in a lot of different uh, commentary on who they want to see. Um, people have gone out to be like, oh, I want Vixen on the team. I think Vixen mm -hmm. has been a part of Birds of Prey before. Um, I would like to see Hawk and Dove back on the Birds of mm -hmm. Prey. Um, I think that would be cool. Um, I almost don't want oracle to be on the birds of prey because yeah. that's like the big thing is oh oracle will be the girl in the chair will be their source of data and all of this stuff yeah um i wouldn't mind there being a feature of barbara every once in a while mm -hmm. but i don't want oracle on the team i hate oracle <laughs> so like i just <laughs> look man at this point oracle you could do you could build a robot to do that job like and i, I understand that oh we don't trust uh technology or whatever and they've had oracle become a bad robot in case you're somebody that's like oh you haven't read no background oracle actually became evil i understand that but you're just wasting barbara like in a fucking librarian role you know what i mean like she's a great fighter she's a great detective like you could have her doing more, but it's like, we like you as Oracle, so we're going to put you in the chair. You know what I mean? And it's yeah. like, dude, you could have somebody else do this. Like, Oracle could easily be Jarvis. You know what I mean? And they could yeah. do that. And you don't need, like, I don't know. I just feel, my thought is, if Gotham is always in such trouble, I think having an extra person to protect Gotham would be pretty important. Yeah. Um and it's like, I don't know, but I, I just don't, I think they had an idea. They're like, we don't want to name, uh, like we have two Batgirls. Everybody loves Cassandra Kane, So we got it. She has to be a Batgirl. And then people also don't want spoiler to be a spoiler anymore. They want her to be a Batgirl. So they fucking threw Batgirls together and they're like, well, what about the big Batgirl? Like, what about her? It's like, ah, let's just put her in the chair. Like she, everybody likes her as Oracle. And it's just like. Bro, she's so much better. Like, I think people forget that New 52 run. That New 52 run was awesome. Yeah. Um, by, uh, oh my God, I'm forgetting her name. Um, the writer. Uh, Gail? Uh, Gail Simone, yes. 
So like that, that run was awesome. And it made me enjoy uh, reading Bad Girl. And then it went to the Babs Tar. I forgot who the writer was for that. I don't think Babs Tar was writing that, but she was drawing it. Went to yeah. the very cutesy, like poppy style kind of Batgirl. And I didn't really get on board with that one. Um, but yeah, I don't know, man. I just think uh, the Birds of Prey. Has the Birds of Prey been a mixed gender group before? Or has it always been um, women? Uh, so Hawk has been on the team before. Okay. Um, but along with Dove. Mm -hmm. um but for a majority of the time i've only seen females on the birds of prey yeah um i don't know if there's many other male uh or non-binary um characters that are bird themed mm -hmm. to be now i don't know how big barda uh, <laughs> is yeah. in the mix of that um, well isn't a bard a type of bird maybe oh yeah but a bat's not a bird. Yeah, but it has wings. wings. It's a predator, all that stuff. Yeah. Birds I don't know. of prey. I don't understand it. The birds eat. Do bats eat birds? I, I, I don't know. Um, but I, like I, kind of I, other, other than Robin, and then of course, everybody who has been Robin, I think that's kind of cliche. And it's just like, no, you have the bat family. Like, you yeah. put those characters there. They don't need to be in the birds of prey. Um, but uh, some of the uh, people that I'm seeing uh, that want certain characters on the team, I'm seeing people say Dr. Light. Um, of course, the female version. Mm -hmm. um, people are saying Vixen. People are uh, putting Supergirl on there as well. Um, oh, don't Huntress. Know how. She's usually on there, isn't she? Huntress is usually on there as well. Uh, I could very much see Huntress on this, on this team. Um yeah, I would I would like to see Hawk Girl. Yeah. I haven't yeah. seen much of her at all lately. So. Yeah, where the hell is she? Um, I mean, Justice League, nobody reads that anymore. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Interesting. Um, I heard a lot of like, wasn't the Kelly Thompson stuff like very controversial though? Wasn't she very like hated or loved? So she is a writer that very much is like, hey. I'm going to write my books to be the most fun that it, they can be. Mm. Um, so yes, there's very much like compelling stories. Um, she created one of my favorite characters in Marvel, um, which is Thor's daughter, uh, Brigid. Mm -hmm. um, she's amazing. Uh, and that whole story, time travel and all of that, it was really, really cool. I, I mm -hmm. love that story. Um, a lot of people call it nonsense, but I'm just like, Hey, you can have fun with comics sometimes. Yeah. Um, and with some of the stuff that we are reading, like we see the serious writing or the attempt of serious writing, mm -hmm. and then we read Mark Wade's uh, World's Finest, and it's like this is like freaking off the walls, batshit crazy. Yeah, and it's still fun. If you're giving me that in Birds of Prey, I'm totally fine with that. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I mean, I just like good writing, uh, which yeah. there has been a lot of that lately. And so, um, you know, we'll see where it goes. But moving on from that, ladies and gentlemen, we got a few questions up here on the Discord and on YouTube. So let's dive into these. Uh, first up, I think, is King, uh, who says, do you think Mischetti would be a good to direct the DCU Batman movie, or should it be someone and why? We kind of already talked about this. Uh, yeah. I think he is the perfect fit, to be honest. He does ensembles. He's kind of already messed with Batman in The Flash. I think he'll be great. Yeah, same. Um, yeah. Uh, he posted that twice for some reason. I don't know why that happened. Uh, and then we have uh, Arwitz, who, uh, okay, uh, do you think we uh, could see Damien and Jonathan Kent type of movie in the new DCU? Not <clears throat> not big. It would have I, to be, they would have to be young. I think that this is an animated short mm. or a, a series. I don't think we see there being, or... I this is your Spider Verse movie, Juice. I think the Super Ooh, Sons uh, is the um the John Kent and Damien mm -hmm. on different worlds, and like that be your like multiversal story with with a hero. Yeah, I guess that would be interesting. I also it doesn't need to be multiverse. They can just go to different planets. Like yeah, that um, that that's very true. Um, but I think that would be interesting because you can get away with a lot of the kidness in um in the jokes and whatnot. 
Um, because I think a lot of people forget that about Spider Verse is like they're young or they're they're teenagers, you know. Um, but like, yeah, I don't know. I think it's really good. You'd have, I'm I'm sure they would include Batman and Superman in there, being the parent figures in that. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I'd be very interested to see where they go with that. That'd be cool. Um, but I feel like they would probably force Crypto in there for some reason. Probably, you know, um, uh, Crypto would be there to help out because it's like, oh yeah, a dog. Why not? Uh, which uh he's gonna be in the superman movie isn't he hasn't that been yep. into that yeah so yep. that'll be gun confirmed it yeah yeah so um crazy shit there but yeah i don't know uh i mean it's possible that could be it i just think batman beyond works better to be honest because like here's the thing just imagine this is spider-verse right imagine what zadarsky did but good you know what i mean <laughs> So, like, that's what Spider-Verse, you know, if, if you were to do Batman, like, because I think that's what Chip tried to do. He just did it fucking terribly. You know what I mean? Like, instead of giving, honestly, I don't know why he didn't do this. Instead of us giving us, like, what, how many issues was that run? It started, like, on 130, right? Ended on 135. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of giving us those first four issues of him getting transported to another world, he should have just been falling through a bunch of other Batman worlds the whole time yeah. and just been like meeting them and like, oh, yeah, I got to try to get back to my world. And they'd be like, oh, yeah, well, I could try to help you or whatever. Like that would have been more compelling. And then just having like all of these different Batman shat onto a page and then like, oh, yeah, look, now they're all Zern and Ra. And I don't give a shit about that. Like I would have rather him spent an issue with Batman 66. You know what I mean? Because yeah. here's the thing. Zadarsky, any future writers out there you're supposed to make me care about characters that's your main goal and my thing is is if you wanted to have character development which still blows my mind we're going to talk about this later when we do the rest stuff people think character development is happening in this Zadarsky run i don't know how but people think that's happening anyways i think if batman we were getting we're they're trying to tell the story of like Batman's getting older, right? He doesn't know who he is. He's he's losing his mind with Zuri and Rob. Dude, every Batman, like Arkham Knight, 66, all of those Batman, Keaton, they've all went through shit. They could have all taught this Bruce that is going through shit how to better himself and how to get himself back to normal. You know what I mean? Yeah. 66 could have been the light in his life. Been like, oh, chum, you got to, you know, you got to make sure you're doing the good things in life, too. It's not just all about crime fighting all the time. Like, you know what I mean? You could have done that. He could have learned how to, like, not necessarily love again or anything like that, because I don't think that's a problem. Although Zar Zadarsky is going to shit on that, too. But, like, you could have, like, actually done something with all of those Batman instead of being like, oh, it's just a collage. It's just him falling through the multiverse. And I don't know. I, I don't know. I just don't understand. I feel like people aren't like planning out stories anymore. They're just throwing shit at the wall. I don't understand <laughs> it. It's, it's kind of annoying, which I, I don't know if you saw this conversation in Discord, but very popular Twitter account um, that posts a bunch of bat cat photos all the time. Mia? Uh, yeah. Has given up, apparently. Which is, they said they're just tired. They don't like what's happening in the comics. They got other things going on in their life, and they just don't care. And I'm like, damn, you got a Stan account to fucking stop caring about Batman and Catwoman? That's how bad the books are. A Stan account. Stan accounts fucking go through all the trash. But you know what? It's been trash since Tom King left when it comes to Bad Cat stuff. They have not posted since May 26th. Yeah, they just stopped. I went to go check out their because, like, I don't know what I was going through. I think maybe I tweeted them at one point or I quote tweeted them because they they always post really nice art. So I like to like I used to just randomly come across them. I never followed them, but I think I quote tweeted it, and I always go and like delete tweets randomly just to like you know I was like I don't care about this anymore. I delete it. And I was going through there. And I noticed there was a it was like limited like you know when somebody privates their shit. I was like, why is this private? Who's this? And I clicked on it. I was like, oh, I was like, why are they private? And usually when somebody goes private, it's because they said something fucked up. And like, they're like, oh, no, I'm getting a lot of hate. So I don't want to fucking deal with it. And um, yeah, I just I hit out some people on Discord. I was like, something happened here. And yeah, I, I come to terms. They are just tired of the books. They don't like where it's going. Yeah. Um, granted, I don't think that would have they wouldn't have read this current issue because it just came out this week. So they they stepped out before even 
seeing how much worse it was going to get. So, uh, yeah, pretty crazy. But hey, I respect anybody. I respect anybody that's willing to get off social media because yeah. it is toxic as fuck. Uh, Clay learned that uh, this week with Star Wars fans. So, oh, man. I saw some of the conversation and I was like, God damn. Um, yeah. The Star Wars fans are the original toxic fandom. They're, they <laughs> are the OGs. Uh, moving on from that, we have uh, Kids too. Who do you want to write Brave and the Bold? You know? So, I... There's a part of me, and I know uh, Juice will completely disagree. Um, I know he's a part of the round table. Mm -hmm. I don't want King to write this one. Interesting. The reason why I don't want King to write this one is because it's the first time we're going to see Batman, as far as we know, mm -hmm. in this new re reiteration of the universe. I want a... I almost want a brand new person. Hmm. I want somebody who has the writing chops to write a good film script but i like i could see them going to king or to uh a uh, uh, scott snyder or to a jim lee to get mm. their notes on batman to know batman or whatever but i i i want a brand new take on hmm. on the batman character i want of course the comic bookiness of the character yeah but i don't necessarily know if i want i i can't necessarily say oh i want uh tomasi i want peter tomasi to write the script for yeah for batman braver than bold like i i know he can write a good batman story in comics mm -hmm. i don't know what his writing ability for films is you know yeah yeah um yeah i don't know i i think king knows how to write batman um I, yeah, I have read Brave and the Bold 2. Um, there will be some comments in the future, which will be very interesting um, that people won't expect from me. But I think everything he has done previously with Batman is really good. I think he knows Batman. I think Killing Time was a fantastic shot of Batman, of how, like, just a small story of how Batman should be, what he can do. And, like, I love that whole fight scene in the, in the you know, the park. I think that was fucking awesome. Um, I would be curious on how he writes the rest of the Bat family. You know what I mean? That would be my only, like, curiosity with King is, like, are you going to write Damien very obnoxious? Are you going to... Because he didn't write... He wrote Damien, but he didn't write a lot of Damien. You know what I mean? Same thing yeah. with the other Bat family, I don't think. He didn't write much of it. Um, I do think King will be consulted with that for sure. I don't have somebody. I mean, if, if Christina Hudson knocks it out of the park with Flash, then I'll keep her around for this. Like, I won't mind it. Um, I just don't know. I don't know what to expect from her. I think yeah. Birds of Prey, the reason why it was bad is because of the director. I I will go ahead and say this, uh, because I just found uh, him on Twitter and uh, just found out his name. I've, I've, I've said this movie would make a great Batman and or Green Arrow movie. Just put like just put this movie within the DC universe and change the characters, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, the writer of Bullet Train that came out last uh, year. Um, the writer uh, the writer is Zach uh, Olkowitz. Mm -hmm. um, just found him on Twitter. Um, but he has also written uh, The Last Voyage of Demeter. Demeter? No, idea I don't what know. That is. And then Fear Street Part Two, um, 1978, which is a Netflix series. Mm -hmm. Um, I saw Fear Street Part One. Oh, that was a big is... thing for a bit, right? Yeah, yeah. It was it was uh, back in 2021. Mm -hmm. Um, they did like four or I think yeah four different series, um, that were meant to be theatrical films. Um, but then due to COVID, they're just like, hey, we're just gonna push it on to Netflix, and they'll be you know booming. Um, yeah. I think for a horror genre um the the take on that is really cool um mm -hmm. i you know for somebody who doesn't like horror like i i thought it was it was well executed yeah um so i i trust this writer already with just three films under his belt i think he could do batman interesting i wouldn't mind whoever did um whoever wrote it to to do batman 
they already work well with Mischetti. They know how to do an ensemble. Um, cause I, a lot of people felt like the second it movie was a little too long maybe. Um, but I thought the second it movie was good. A lot of people said it wasn't better than the first, but I think it's the reason why that is, is because you don't worry about adults the way you worry about kids. That's why the first movie is so good. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't mind those writers or whoever wrote those to be a part of it. Um, cause I did enjoy those films, but yeah, I don't know. I don't have a particular writer right now. Um, because none of them are working. So, yeah, um, you know, what can you do? All right, moving on to the YouTube questions. We have Jason Todd. Pick two of these five WB characters that would be the most interesting for Injustice 3. Rorschach, Harry Potter, Pennywise, Willy Wonka, Scooby-Doo Gang, Jon Snow. That was six characters. Uh, oh, the Scooby-Doo Gang is six characters by itself, it feels <laughs> like. Uh, five? Yeah. So uh, I would include the band. So six. But... Yeah, uh, the most interesting, fucking Harry Potter has to be one. I would fucking love to see somebody getting stomped by Harry Potter. Like, and I'm give me kid Harry Potter too, which I think would be even funnier. So um, I'd go Harry Potter. Um, Scooby-Doo gang is kind of already not in Injustice, but they are in, um, what's that game that nobody plays anymore? Multiverses? Oh, yeah. Um, I think the most intriguing here would be Rorschach, Harry Potter, and Pennywise. Although Willy Wonka would be funny depending on his abilities. I think that due to Joker making an appearance on Mortal Kombat, I mm-hmm. think that you should do Pennywise. Um, just to have another clown in the franchise um, be thrown in there. Um, I think Rorschach would be cool. Mm-hmm. Um I think his interactions, you know, because the the big I think some of the fun most fun things about Injustice and Injustice 2 mm-hmm. was the opening lines for the characters and how yeah. they interacted. Um, I think Rorschach interacting with the DC characters, I think that would be really fun. Um, so for me, it would be Pennywise and Rorschach. Um, my uh honorable mention would probably be Jon Snow. Um, just yeah. because after uh, watching now, I think only maybe half, if not a little less than half of the first season of mm-hmm. <laughs> Game oh of Thrones. My God. <laughs> Barely half? I I am planning. I've worked some things in my schedule recently. Uh, mm. I think I'm going to start uh, picking that up again. Um I, I love the character of Jon Snow already. Yeah, Jon Snow, he's the heart of that show. Uh, he's great. Um, but yeah, I, I'd go with those. So moving on from that, we got Nathan who says, which character would, which character would be most interesting? Kid of Green Arrow and Black Canary. Kid of Zaz and Dollhouse. Who's Dollhouse? And they're not talking about, I don't, I didn't look it up. Um, kid of Damien and Cassandra Kane. Uh, kid of Hal Jordan and Carol Ferris. I don't know who Carol Ferris is. Uh, kid of Superman and or Supergirl and Jimmy Olsen. Uh, P.S. I meant to say Andy instead of Anya last week. Juice's racist commenter is the one he mentioned on stream. So uh, a lot of people probably wouldn't know who Andy is. Andy is an old female character that I used to do on my channel back in the day. Pink hair, pink shirt, pink scarf. Um, very animated um, kind of character that I used to do. Uh, so that's what Andy is. Very A lot of my old school viewers would realize who Andy is. And as for the racist commenter, I talked about this on stream before. When I first started out, because um, I've been doing YouTube for 10 years now or whatever, uh, I had a racist commenter who would come into my on every one of my videos and would tell me to go back to my own country. And they basically thought I was an yeah, Arab. Damn. So they were like, yeah, go back to your own country, you terrorist and all this kind of shit. And I'm like, yeah, it was fucked up. And I was telling people that I used to, and I I do this from time to time, but as I've gotten older, I'm like, it's just wasted energy. I used to talk shit to people all the fucking time. I'd be like, dude, you're not gonna, you're not gonna fucking scare me with your fucking, you're a terrorist kind of stupid bullshit. And I used to talk a lot of shit to this person, like just like stupid, like the, you know, the comments that would get those people mad, like where you're just like playing it up. And like, it's like when somebody yells at you and is trying to be like very odd to you and you just wave to them and be like, bye. Like oh, that's the I, worst well, thing you can do. The the Star Wars fan that yeah. I was talking to, um, like he was saying all these things wrong about 
about the mythos and everything. I was like, dude, mm-hmm. you have the internet right at your fingertips. And I was screenshotting yeah. things and sending it to him. I was like, I host a podcast. I, I nearly get paid to, to know all these stuff. Yeah. He's like, I don't care about your podcast that has 20 listeners. And I was like, Oh, I think I gained another listener. Yeah. He's like, absolutely not, man. I'm like, Oh, you're just playing hard to get. Like, yeah. I, I like, I, I'm not going to tell you what the podcast is. I'm going to have to make you like, you're going to have to look for it. He's like, no, man. Like he, he started to get, freaking hate yeah. me after that it was That's hilarious the easiest way to, to piss him off but yeah i ended up seeing this guy because this was on youtube back in the day like twitter wasn't i mean twitter was a thing but it wasn't like super huge as it is now but uh for some reason he used his photo and his real name and so i was just like i looked that up i looked it up on facebook and he was just this sad guy and he, i was just like wow i just felt bad about talking shit to him because he was yeah. just like this sad old drunk dude and I'm just like, oh, this is pathetic. Um, so like, I just stopped talking to him after that. I blocked him for his own sake. I was like, eh. I was like, come on, improve yourself, my guy. He had like no friends too. Like it seemed like uh, it was just sad. But anyways, so um, as for uh, these characters, I think the most interesting one is going to be Black Canary and Green Arrow. Yeah. So if you did not remember this, um, at the end of Death Metal two mm-hmm. going into infinite frontier uh worlds had collided and there was uh multiple characters from different universes on, or a different earth should i say mm-hmm. uh that were on the main earth mm-hmm. um green arrow being one of them and it was the daughter of canary and oliver oh yeah um it's a character I would very much uh, like to know more about. Uh, so I would say that she is the most interesting. But you said you did not know who Dollhouse is and you did not know who Carol Ferris is. So yeah. I'm going to show you right now. Um, you're going to feel kind of stupid with uh, Dollhouse um, because it it's a house? it's a character that you talk about all the oh, time. Oh, you know, it's funny. When I first read this comment, it's who I thought about. But she's not in that book long. No, she's not. Not yes. at all. So, but um, it's 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 a character that you've mentioned several yeah. times. I mentioned Dollmaker, so like that's yeah. the first thing I thought about. I didn't know. I don't remember those characters all having names. Um, but yeah. that makes sense. Dollhouse. She's the reason why I think she needs to be in a movie. Because mm-hmm. holy shit, people would ooga booga over her. They'd be like, oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? She'd be everybody's new waifu, and that's why I think people need to. She's like a Silent Hill character. So it's uh either her or it's the daughter of her and Zaz is who he said. I, no. That would be a terrifying uh, yeah. child. And then the second one, he said, Hal Jordan and Carol Ferris. Uh, you're going to recognize Carol Ferris as well. Um, oh, yeah, is yeah, yeah. The okay. pink lantern. Yeah, um, sure. Or uh, So I think that uh, any children of the lanterns uh, would be fun just to kind of see um, which lantern they would be a part of, whether it be mm-hmm. one of the ones that the parents are a part of or a different factor, whether that be the indigo lanterns or the red lanterns or orange lanterns. Uh, I think that sometimes that could put a lot of stress and controversy, especially if like they become a red lantern. It's like, fuck, like you're, you're super angry and now you can't take off that ring or you die. Like, yeah, like that within itself is, is absolutely wild. Um, so I, I would still go with uh, Oliver and uh, Dinah's uh, daughter uh, mm-hmm. being, of course, uh, Green Arrow in that universe, um, being the most interesting. Um, I think it would be fun to see a Supergirl, a Jimmy Olsen child. Yeah, um, that is more so in the animated series. Uh They've done some dating and, and stuff that is no longer canon, I I do believe. Mm-hmm. Um, or now that everything matters and nothing matters, it's it's all confusing nowadays. Yeah, uh, It could be somewhat canon, uh, but I, I think that would be kind of cool. Have they ever done a story where Jimmy Olsen... Because like, I know like they like to try to bring a lot of representation. Has he ever been gay? Um, That's a good question. I feel I'm like it may have been never. hinted at at one point. Yeah. I don't know why, like, I feel like it's been hinted at, too. And I haven't even read much Superman. Um, so, like, I don't know if it's ever happened. But it would be interesting to see, like, uh, 
you know, a story about that. I think you could do a good representation story with him being Superman's best friend or whatever, you know, um, would be an interesting thing because the Superman wouldn't care. Like, you just be like, oh, all right, cool. I'm an alien. Like, why does it fucking matter? <laughs> like, yeah. You know, it'd be very interesting. Um, but yeah, I think uh, we definitely need some better stories for there. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, I didn't know they dated, to be honest. I know they dated like in the show. Like, but, you know, this is a show. Yeah. So in the in the animated series, they had dated and okay. like, but also it was kind of a shit is that thing redheaded because... Jimmy Olsen? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and but like Supergirl was still new to like planet Earth. So she was kind of just like using him and stuff. So uh, it was, like, like it was it was that. Yeah. Typical, typical hot girl using good guy. <laughs> God, <laughs> fucking Supergirl. All right. Moving on from that. Moncray with another crazy question like he always has. Would having Batman slash DC hentai manga like Arkham After Hours, Alfred's Harem, MILFs of the Phantasm, written by actual hentai writers, fly off shelves or get the same fate as Batman Damned? I think it being manga would make a difference. This is a funny question. This is a um, hilarious question. It wouldn't do well in America, I don't think. I, I, well... I say it wouldn't it wouldn't be done by DC. Somebody yeah, I was going to say doing this. Th this would not be an actual license sponsored product. license partnership. Yeah. It would be somebody who is just doing R34 for free yeah. um on the internet. Yeah. I have seen people do a whole comic book that is R34 and it's surprisingly good. Like the concept <laughs> is good. Like the concept was literally Harley Quinn caught batman in this death defying room and he was like how do we get out harley quinn and she's like you gotta fuck me out and i was just like what <laughs> what because they had toxins in their body and so like they had to every time they did it like the toxins got out and uh but it ends the story ends with her basically becoming part of the bat family because he like realizes she's a good person <laughs> like it's like what <laughs> it's fucking good um it's fucking hilarious but Ooh, anyways i think it it could sell because i think like obviously there's a lot of that stuff on the internet already but i mean i love the title. i love the thought that you put into these titles arkham after hours alfred's harem like i could see these as like animes you know what i mean because animes are so ridiculous with the titles i wish dc would go that hardcore some people, I, I do think a lot of people in America are very prudish, so you're never going to see anything like this. And to be honest, from my understanding, in Japan, a lot of those like hentais and stuff, they're not licensed. They just do them. And yeah. then if they get in trouble from the studio, the studio will be like, don't do that anymore. And then they'll be like, okay, we stop. And that's kind of how it is. Like It's like a, an unspoken rule that like everything's on the table until the actual creator's like, don't do this. And then they're just like, okay, we won't do it. And so, because Japan is uh, all like big about respect and shit, right? Yeah. So, like, that's kind of how they do it. Um, I don't think they would fly off the shelves because, like I said, I don't know. I mean, Clay grew up in a, you kind of grew up in a conservative family, right? Would you say that? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I would say a, a conservative to a point. Mm -hmm. Um, not like the hardcore Christian, like whatever, yeah. but I grew up in a Catholic family. Okay. So, like, yeah. So, like, I don't know because I know a lot of people that have been religious that weren't exposed to a lot of certain things, you know, or like their family was like, no, that's bad. And like, so you wouldn't be able to sell this. Like, in the South, I'm, like, this would be condemned. Oh, yeah. 100%. I know people, um, uh, my wife being one of them, uh, that didn't know a whole lot about, um, the opposite sex uh and all of that dealing with anything sexual oh uh, so they and, didn't get like the fifth grade video yeah no like th she was part of the uh uh the families that were like oh you can never see that oh um, yeah bad yeah bad yeah. um yeah so i don't know man it's really hard i i would say it wouldn't do well in america that's all i would say because I think, you know, especially right now with the political climate, like, I mean, they're right now they're trying to push like, oh, drag shows are making the kids gay. Like, that's what we're dealing with right now. And then you want to do superhero porn like it's not going to it's not going to fly. Yeah, no, so, uh, it, it would it would it would 
make more people uh of course you, you know we always talk about the the fox news headline for a day right yeah. mm-hmm. um you would see that and then you would have all of these crazy Karen mothers trying to protest the flash yeah. the next day saying, yeah. Oh, you know, these, th- this movie is going to make my daughter into a whore. And like, yeah. like what? what? It's like, yeah. What the fuck? yeah, I agree. And I, that is very believable. Um, So I think what would happen, but here's the thing, money talks. So like if they did these in other countries and they were flying off the shelves, like they could not print them fast enough it would come to America. Um, you would probably, depending on how fast they're made, you would have to like ask for them at a comic shop or at a bookstore or something like that. Um, yeah. That would be the only way I could think about it. Uh, but to be honest, I think you would probably, before you would see something like like a manga, you'd probably see like a superhero erotic novel before you saw that. Because at least you have to read that. <laughs> There's not like uh, pictures most of the times. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Love the premise. I would love for somebody to do these online and just do them as a fucking, if you're an artist and you have nothing better to do, uh, fucking do that. Cause I think it'd be fucking hilarious. Um, but yeah, I don't think it would do well in America though. Uh, Eduardo de la Cruz, uh, if you were going to play games, uh, I'm going to need a cup of who would win, uh, if we're going to play games, uh, apocalypse versus doomsday, gorilla grod versus Darth Vader, wonder woman versus Helena. Darth Vader is the new condiment king yeah so, um and wonder woman versus hella not oh Helena. yeah my bad um I, I mean doomsday destroys apocalypse right i would think so yeah. um now granted i love x-men yeah, there same. is a lot a lot of x-men stories mm-hmm. there is a lot of comic history um just here recently i think one of the greatest x-men runs that i've only got to even like dip maybe even a toe in Mm -hmm. um completely flipped the canon on x-men and completely rewrote it um Mm -hmm. and it's just amazing um and they made apocalypse like super op but also like a not necessarily anti-hero but like it's really weird because now all of the mutants live together and Mm -hmm. like yeah some of them may hate each other but like they're living together for like the greater good of mutant kind and all of that so like isn't that called like utopia or some shit yeah uh yeah it's krakoa krakoa yeah yeah Yeah. um but yeah like apocalypse has been seen as somebody who was like yeah kind of started the whole thing of mutants but also is like a bad guy but now a good guy an anti-hero uh mm-hmm. you know it, it's all sorts of different things but he was at one point in the mythos like like this was the big bad yeah so like i could see this being a very good fight mm-hmm. but i'm i'm gonna have to call doomsday on it yeah i just feel like um you know what i I was thinking dark side. I don't know why I thought dark side. I didn't like, I was like, I, I when I said doomsday, uh, I pictured dark side. I was like, dark side destroys him. Oh, well, uh, dark side would definitely destroy. Yeah. Apocalypse. Now with doomsday. Huh, I think it comes down to would Superman beat apocalypse ass. And I think he would. Yes. And doomsday beat Superman. Or if mm-hmm. you want to say it was a standstill, whatever. Um, I still go doomsday. Yeah. I think it'd be a, a, a more uh, interesting fight than him fighting Darkseid. Yes. So, yeah. I, but I would go Doomsday. Uh, Darth Vader destroys Giller of the Grad, right? Like... So you have the idea of uh, tele- uh, like te- yeah. telepathy. Telekinesis? Yeah, telepathy. Telepathy yeah. with Gorilla Grad. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, the the whole thing of, like, the force only works on on the weak minded. Yeah, like that would be a very interesting Ooh, like okay. conversation between the two because yeah. you can't say Gorilla Grodd is weak minded. Mm-hmm. Um, That's true, and I think he's very strong willed. Um, but I would still have to give it to Darth Vader. Yeah, um, I think. Well, Darth I mean, but Vader... the, that's only like I'm assuming when you mean the weak minded. That's when it's a, like these are not the droids you're looking for. Like, isn't that what it is? He could still force choke him. Yes, he gets still four stroke yeah. him and everything else, but like when it comes to because I think Gorilla Grodd would try mm-hmm. to like take over Darth Vader's mind. 
mm-hmm. and mm, that's true and like oh just kill yourself or, or something like that yeah. i don't think it would work yeah like I, I think that it's very odd um but they somewhat played with this in marvel versus dc um mm. when characters joined or, or went into their respected worlds yeah marvel going into the dc world and dc going to the marvel world their rules still stuck so if gorilla grod was facing darth vader and darth vader had home world advantage mm-hmm. i don't think his telepathy would work on darth vader mm. interesting you know? yeah i just think lightsaber chops things in half so um <laughs> that's what i would go with uh and then Very i true. would say wonder woman uh wins this yeah these are two gods um this is this is basically uh wonder woman versus hades essentially um and i believe wonder woman has defeated hades uh before so i i I feel like helena is also kind of like cersei right so Uh, she's beat cersei before yeah hella is is is, yeah hello yeah well no i i think hella is is like the queen of the damned is like okay so then yeah the queen of hell basically yeah hades is probably a better shout um so yeah wonder woman has destroyed everybody though so like yeah i think wonder woman owns that uh let's see uh ka okay is it Cade the blade is that how it's pronounced uh i think rami would not do justice for batman but i think Roz would be the great first villain for batman since it's the first movie based off grant morrison's batman run i just want to know why you don't like that uh, I believe Roz would be good for the justice would be a good Justice League villain. Okay. So I don't know if people really remember Grant Morrison's run. And if you don't, go back and read that shit because it's so convoluted. Like it's all over the place. And I don't know, like I Rachel Ghoul, like, yes, do the League of Assassins play a role in it for sure. I just don't think that's his best story. Like I mean, Tom Taylor just did a really good Rachel Gould story recently. Granted, I don't like yeah. that he killed Batman. I think that was kind of dumb. Yeah. But for the most part, Rachel Gould did really good there. Um, and I think just the animated version of Rachel Gould is way better than what I've read in some comics. You know what I mean? But I, one, again, the reason why, it's not that I don't think Rachel Gould can work. I just don't want him because I'm tired of characters we've already seen on the big screen. We've seen Rachel Ghoul like four times already. It feels like it doesn't hasn't even shown up like two or three times on the small screen already. Yeah. Like, yeah. And then we saw him on the big screen. I don't need Rachel Ghoul anymore. I want fucking some B list superhero villains from Batman. That's what I want. So I don't want Raish. I don't care. Um, because again, what are you gonna do with Raish? He's gonna have a bunch of assassins for Batman to fight. And is race going to whether they're, they're going to fight in the desert with swords? I I will say this. If we ever get bat assassins, mm-hmm. I think that's going to be cool one day. Do I need it? The first film of Batman? Not necessarily. Yeah. You know, again, I want a different take on Batman. Um, again, we've had the conversations of, you know, grounded and all of this stuff. I want comic booky. Mm-hmm. bad assassins very comic booky but i also want to revel in the fact that we might be getting the b listers the c listers mm-hmm. the things that can leave longevity with gotham city you know and not just be like oh here's you know the one villain that's trying to destroy all of gotham like okay yeah. calm, calm the fuck down like we just yeah. need one problem for the bat family and then we move on from there mm-hmm yeah um so yeah i don't need Raish. uh although with it depends on what they're doing with damien right is damien already going to be established as a robin because if he is then we don't need to tell the race story but if he's not and like batman is finding robin for the first time then i think race is going to have to be involved right so that would kind of suck but i'm kind of hoping damien's already established so we'll see what happens if james gunn is smart he will like have like little vignettes or something made for some of these movies. Like if you don't know who the characters are, you know what I mean? I think that'd be kind of cool. I've always thought that should be done. Or you partner up with movie theaters and you show these vignettes before the movie starts. Like the Alamo draft house does. So like, that'd be kind of cool. But anyway, so yeah, that's why I don't want Rage. Uh, Alexis Barrera. 
Uh, which of these characters deserves to be a reoccurring villain in modern times? Dr. Death, Mr. Bloom, Mad Monk. Dr. Death, who's he's villain? What villain is he for? Uh, Dr. Death. I know Mr. Bloom, obviously. And then I've seen Mad Monk before, but I feel like Mad Monk is... Is he culturally culturally appropriate nowadays? Because he's kind of stereotypical, no? Mad Monk? Uh, if I remember correctly? See. Let's see here. Uh, but, so all of these, I believe, are Batman villains. Oh, okay. So, I know Mr. Bloom is for sure. He's the most recent modern. I would say yeah. Mr. Bloom is technically modern. He's just not used. All right. So the Mad Monk. Um, I feel like I know what he looks from like. from New Earth. Um, it's a scroll and crossbones, and he looks like a KKK member. Um, it, Dr. Just Death, a, you mean? No, no, no. Uh, this is Mad Monk. Um, he's red. He wears a red uh, cloak and in, in, in hood or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, powers. Uh, vampires room. Uh, so he's a vampire. Um, he. Oh, yeah. yeah. Why the fuck is he called Red Monk? I have no That's idea. So weird. Um, but man, when I type <laughs> this is in... his history. This is history. The monk was a vampire who wore a red monk like outfit. <laughs> okay, <laughs> uh, yeah, because it is like when you type in mad monk in Google, you get a lot of like Asian films and stuff like that. Um, so pretty crazy. It's also a lot of Rasputin stuff, yeah, which is very interesting. So I guess that's what they're kind of pushing this going towards yeah yeah i uh, i saw that movie uh kingsman recently or the kingsman the origin oh, yeah, yeah, one yeah, yeah. and rasputin's in that really weird really weird because he really? like uh they like i i don't know if this is like history but apparently like rasputin was very like sexual and shit but he also like they kind of like give him powers or whatever like oh, that's kind of like jesus it's it's so weird. It was. I was like, okay, um, but yeah, that's where I remember Rasputin from recently. Is that Kingsman movie? But yeah. So and Doctor Death. That is a uh, oh. Mad Monk. So so Doctor Death. Hmm. Uh, Doctor Death was one of Snyder's villains in the beginning of New Fifty Two. Do you remember, remember the one that like his teeth was growing oh, and his, his fingers yeah. were growing? Yeah. That was Doctor Death um mr bloom is the best out of all of those in my opinion yeah yeah um he's just creepy you can have him start a dispensary start making money off weed and stuff um yeah i think i would go mr bloom i think he has the best character design mad monk is just i don't know that just seems dumb like he's not even i think a monk. it's I, I i don't think he's relevant anymore if yeah. you if you look into the vampires of the dc universe i think mm -hmm this mad monk is near the bottom if not the very bottom um yeah when it mad comes monk, to... you'd have to do a whole new character design you couldn't do the red hood anymore yeah if you look at dr death and mr bloom um as far as going into a uh reoccurring villain yeah um i think uh to bring back the notion of like the horror aspect of of batman mm -hmm. bring in mr dr bloom or, or, or yeah mr bloom um yeah. i think doing that every once in a while mm -hmm. will give you like that feeling of like yeah batman does deal with all of these like wacky villains but he also you know messes yeah. with the disturbed as well and that's when you go with uh doctor the doctor death story was crazy because he like affected people's bones to grow so they would turn into these weird like skeleton like uh creatures when they die like their bones would just grow and they'd be like, ah, and they'd fucking like die, which was kind of creepy. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I I think those are the kind of character. This is the problem when everybody creates new characters, right? Some really good characters just get lost. Yeah. Um, like I would love to rewrite every one of Tynan's characters. I, I mean, because like, you know, I'd have some die off the start, but like I am I'm never going to get over the potential the designer had. And how it was ruined just to tell a Joker story. Never going to yeah. get over that. Um, uh, moving on to Clay, who says, which casting would polarize fans the most? Jack Black as the Penguin. Jackie Chan as Ra's al Ghul. 
Aaron Paul as Red Hood, Keanu Reeves as Batman. So polarize, which would be shocking, most talked about. I don't think, as much as I love Jack Black, I think he'll do a good Penguin. I mean, he did a great Bowser. It's the yeah. best thing about that movie, in my opinion. Um, Jackie Chan as Rachel Ghoul could be seen as insensitive nowadays. Yeah. You know, I think so, that might be, I think that one would be kind of polarizing. Yeah. Um, get this, his third one, Aaron Paul is as Red Hood. Mm-hmm. I didn't know this uh, until literally two days ago. Apparently, in like the first two seasons of Breaking Bad, mm-hmm. Aaron Paul was like the top, was one of the top three fan castings for Terry McGinnis in a Batman Beyond movie. Really? That's weird. That blows my mind. Yeah. You know what's funny? Um, I feel like Sholo, this is how you pronounce it, right? Sholo from yeah. um, Blue Beetle. Yeah. He would have probably been a good Terry if he wasn't Blue Beetle. Because he's tall. I think he's kind of tall. He's got the flowy hair. Um, I think I think it would have worked. Yeah, I think that would have been kind of cool. Uh, but Terry is like mixed, isn't he? Isn't he half Asian or is he Asian? I think because his dad's white, I think, in the show. His, but I think his, his dad mom's is maybe white Asian. His his mom looks white in the oh. show, though. That's the thing. Oh. I think it's more Has so. Put, I, I feel think like it's. He's, I don't know. Maybe I'm just making that up. I feel no, like they he, they yeah. have said that he's mixed before. Oh, OK. But I'm not entirely sure because I I'm not that well enveloped in the character yeah. as far as his background to know what part of his yeah. family is mixed. Yeah, yeah, because I don't remember the I don't remember what his mom and dad looked like. I feel like his dad looked like just generic white character that they do in cartoons. You know, um, yeah. you know, I don't know what I've been I've been seeing a lot lately online. Everybody's like sharing that Static Shock racist scene. Have you ever seen yeah. that scene? Like, I don't know why that's making the rounds lately, but like, that's such a powerful scene. Like, it's crazy. Uh, but the most polarizing, I think the Jackie Chan would only be polarizing because people would find it insensitive, right? Because they're like, whoa, that should be like a Middle Eastern character played by Rage. Granted, uh, would Jackie Chan be worse than um, uh, what's his face that actually played him? L- Liam Neeson? Yeah. So, um, so it, it says here that. Uh, Terry McGinnis being half Asian has become canon at the beginning of uh, Batman Beyond the White Knight. So Murphy put him as half Asian. We don't acknowledge Murphy's universe. (laughs) So, yeah, I I, man, that's crazy because like. I could have sworn that that was a bigger thing, but I guess maybe that's just kind of, I think it's one of those things where maybe the internet just took off with it and they just fed it down everybody's throat. And it's like, Oh yeah, they had like one source and they use that source for everything. Uh, It was kind of like recently with that Ninja Turtles thing where they're like, April's black. And it's like, no, if you actually go back and read the first comic, she's not, Uh, but nobody wanted to, nobody wanted to admit that. Um, Which Mark Brooks, I think is a very big comic book artist, right? He ran with that fucking thing and i'm like bro you're in the industry like do your fucking research my guy um but yeah i don't know that's twitter though what can you do Uh, but i think the most talked about would be keanu reeves as batman because i don't think and everybody would be like whoa whoa like we love keanu but as batman that's kind of weird because but granted keanu knows how to not talk so you know that would be interesting i'm batman like i don't know I think Keanu Reeves in a Batman multiverse movie, I'll take it. I think that would be. I mean, cool. he played Batman in Super Pets. Yeah. Um, but I think him being in a multiverse role, like ba- basically Keanu Reeves as uh, the Peter Parker in multiverse, you know, the yeah. old, the dad version of him. Uh, I think I'd, I'd be down with that. But yeah, anyways, uh, you know, his one of his favorite roles is uh, Duke Kaboom from toy story oh really yeah he's, there's like this clip out there where like this little kid uh is like really excited to meet him and he's like oh did you like duke kaboom he's like yeah he's one of my favorites he's like he's one of my favorites too and uh yeah i think it's like one of his more interesting roles people keanu reeves blows my mind um how like down to earth that dude seems um 
if somebody pointed out that he he denied something he's denied marvel movies i guess before but um that he made it a point to be in both spongebob movies because apparently he's like a tumbleweed. In oh, SpongeBob. yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. they were like, he did a Nickelodeon movie instead of fucking doing um, Marvel. And I think that just, like, that's cool. Um, so shout out to Keanu. He seems dope. Uh, anyways, last one we got is Tiny Beauty. What if Robert Kirkman wrote Batman? Um, I would be down to read it. I would say... Uh, we just had this conversation about how like Kirkman is everywhere right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I think it's because I've been talking about Fear of the Walking Dead recently a lot on this yeah. podcast, and so that's probably why this question shows up. The Bat Family would die, but you would care about them before they die. So I will say that because that's the one thing I'm noticing about these shows. Granted, Fear is doing a really interesting way of storytelling where they're kind of doing a story like you kind of know a character is going to die, but they're building up to it. They're like, something happened, right? Like some big event happened and they're like, why aren't you seeing this character anymore? But you're just constantly seeing them in flashbacks. This happens a lot in season four and they do this with color grading. So there's like, they color grade the present time to be very dull, but the past to be very like bright kind of, or like I should say like deserty. And uh, it's very interesting uh, way of storytelling to kind of, foreshadow somebody's death that's gonna happen but dude those deaths happen so quick in those shows and it's just like bro what like i've been shocked about how fast people die in the fear of the walking dead uh which i think is how it should be though he um, made a parody of walking dead mm -hmm. called rick grimes 2000 really and it's the walking dead mixed with star wars nice it has like lightsabers and stuff. That's cool. That is wild. Um, I was looking at some of the stuff that he has done other than Walking Dead and Invincible. Mm -hmm. And like he's done Marvel Zombies. Yeah. Um it's it's more of all the same, you know? Yeah. Um he did that weird story, and I think I maybe owned the first issue, I'm not too sure, where it was what's gonna what was gonna happen after the Walking Dead which was not like it wasn't a continuation of the walking dead. It was just his next story. And it was like uh, a guy that was trying to save people from like a force field slime thing or something like that. I don't know, but nobody talks about it. So also well, I... you did like a, um, wasn't it more kind of like a last, not a last of us story, but like a, um, I felt like evil within type story too. Did he do oblivion song? Was that, that his? was, that was the weird one that I was talking about that nobody talks okay. about. Or did that get made into a show, right? It, it's it's turning into, uh, I believe, a movie. I He had another show. I feel like another show that a lot of people don't talk about that was kind of like, I don't know if it was like scary or something, but I feel like it was I'm, different. I'm not entirely um, sure. Yeah, I don't know. It gave me like Evil Within vibes, um, but I could be totally off, but I'm pretty sure Kirkman had oh, another show. Oh, uh, uh outcast yeah, yeah yeah outcast um because i remember that i think that was a comic as well but not like a super long comic if i'm not mistaken yeah um but yeah no i think robert kirkman i would be interesting for dc to bring on somebody like that i just hope that they would let him do whatever he wants because we're going to be talking about a book later or actually in a few minutes um that i i want to know if dc meddled in that book because yeah. i don't like it anymore with the changes yeah. that are happening um because i felt like it was going somewhere and then it's like oh no it needs to be this now uh so yeah i don't know i would read that but kirkman seems like he's got so much going on yeah so i don't think i don't i wonder if he writes anymore does he still do stuff i feel like he's probably um, just a big business guy i don't think so because i think uh oblivion song is already over yeah i think it's done already yeah i mean he's got so many shows he's probably like working as a writer on the shows now right um so yeah I would I would be down to uh, check it out. He probably wouldn't cut off Batman's hand. That's all I'll say, because he learned that mistake. So, um, yeah. All right, moving on from that, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to go on to our comics. We only got two this week, which is Batman 136, which we'll end that with. But we also got Dark Knights of Steel number 11. And personally, I've checked out of this book. 
I don't care about it anymore. So, Clay, uh, your opinion will matter more here. What are you thinking of this series? So, I can see why you've checked out. Mm -hmm. Um, The way this book was marketed to a lot of us was Game of Thrones. DC meets Game of Thrones. Yeah. And if people have seen Game of Thrones, it is not a happy-go-lucky you know, just knight's tale type of story. It is bloodshed. It is drama, drama, backstabbing, supernatural, all of these different things. Yeah. And so we speculated a whole lot, uh, three issues in, four issues in, on like, oh, there could be like a second season and you introduce this kingdom and this kingdom and, you know, these two will go at war while this one teams up with them. And we we thought of like how this could envelop into a whole new universe of, mm-hmm. of uh, a different pocket of the DC universe. Um, and one thing that you said to me, um, I can't remember if you said it on air or not, but you said, oh, by the look of the next cover of mm-hmm. this, um, it's not what I want. Yeah, And I was like, okay, it's the Trinity, but that doesn't really mean anything. Mm-hmm. Well, it definitely means exactly what you thought it was meaning. Yeah, And, oh, okay, we all have a common enemy, so we're all going to fight together, yeah. and we're going to be the Justice League, basically. Um, it's a little disappointing. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm still interested in some of the plot points that they put into this, yeah. but it's not what I wanted. Yeah, the betrayal at the end. I mean, we're going to kind of just jump around and just give our thoughts on the whole series pretty much. But like the it, this book ends with Amanda Waller being revealed that she's working with the White Martians. Um, so I guess try to, I guess, keep it's weird because she's working with the L's. So I was she trying to take over. Is she trying to build people up to kill the L's, which is kind of it seems like it is now. So there is betrayal there. I didn't want it to be another evil character teaming up with another evil character we know waller can be an asshole and yeah. like she teamed up with my martians that's a very waller thing to do but like i i don't i wanted to read batman versus superman versus wonder woman you know yeah and i was thinking about it because like because you know like once i saw the white martians and like alfred turn into the green martian i was like oh go fuck yourselves because that means like every cool thing that happened in this book it was the white martians doing and because, like, I remember that moment, which I thought was so epic, when Superman fucking hits Batman. And I'm yeah. like, oh, shit. Like, he betrayed him. Like, Superman's bad with his sister. That is awesome. Now that just means it was a white Martian. Yeah. And I'm just like, dude, I, that was the drama. Like, that's what I, I wanted to see how Batman was going to come back and take over the well, city. Like, you know? for me, I still think that, like, if you wanted to save this series and I say Mm -hmm. save, you know, people can still enjoy this book. I'm still enjoying it, 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 but I'm saying it in regards to what our ideas were. Mm -hmm. You can still cause there to be rifts in the future. Right. Um, But this, like, I still like the factions of like the white Martians and the green Martians, you know, Mm -hmm. that doesn't bother me. Yes. There was a deceit of that betrayal. Of, of of Superman versus Batman in mm-hmm. like what issue six or whatever. Um, but I like, I still think that there could be a lot on this, but like you said, it's this idea that like, Oh, are the editors thinking that people don't want to see our heroes fight each other? Yeah. Yes, we do. Like, yeah. like I'm, I'm sorry. Like, People may be tired of injustice and they yeah. may be tired of like an evil Superman, but everybody loves Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Like there's no denying that you look at House of Dragons or House of the Dragon that just came out. Yeah. Those numbers were consistent every single episode like that made more no- noise than f- freaking season eight of Game of Thrones. Like, yeah. It's it's a franchise that people love. It's a franchise that you technically own. WB, DC, it's all together. Like yeah. this should be the easiest cakewalk ever. Yeah. And for them to make this turn of like, oh, 
we're all going to be fine and dandy and it's going to be exactly the way that you know prime earth would be with all yeah. of our heroes working together <clears throat> that's not necessarily what i want it's not necessarily fun in this universe yeah i just don't like that they had a common enemy so fast like that could have been season two like they could have all started fighting each other and it ended with like the death of somebody really big right um but it's all been kind of like, oh, yeah, it was, it was the White Martians the whole time. And I'm like, I just don't care now. Like, I just yeah. don't. Uh, and I feel like, yeah, I don't know, man. Because it was, you rarely see, I don't want to say you rarely see it because they've been told a bunch of times. But with the Game of Thrones aspect of this, seeing Supergirl be the main big bad at the start was so awesome. I'm like, oh, shit, that's kind of cool. And then you're like, okay. I already know where this typical story is going to go. Supergirl is going to be the baddie. Superman's going to be like, no, we have to be better than this. And he's going to end up fighting her. Bruce is going to kind of be in the middle, maybe going after, you know, Supergirl at some point. And, you know, Superman's going to try to stop him. So he's going to be in the middle. Then seeing Superman attack Batman, I was like, oh, fuck. Like, that's awesome. But then they fucking, now they're best bros in this book. Like, they're like, oh, we're actually brothers. Like, I always knew and yada, yada. And then Alfred deceiving Batman, that is pushed to the side, too. It's like, oh, you raised me. It doesn't matter if you're an alien. Like, everything's just kumbaya in one fucking issue. Yeah. And then, of course, they're like, at the end, like, oh, yeah, there was a meteor and yada, yada. And, like, and it was weird because that's why the kumbaya didn't, like, when Bruce is talking to Superman in this book, they're like, you know, they're like, yeah, we're brothers, yada, yada. And then they talk about, like, Alfred lied to me because, like, he was he knew what would happen with that green rock and now you know he had us around it or whatever and like they were kind of like he was kind of trying to put it on like alfred lied to me about the green rock you know what i mean yeah. and then we find out that white martians have this green rock so it makes it seem like oh were you plotting with them this whole time like are you like you were lying to me like you could have put me in danger or whatever and then it's just like oh you raised me we're best of friends and it's just like i i don't I don't see how Tom, like Tom Taylor is so consistently bad at endings. I don't like he's <laughs> wildly consistent at like not sticking the landing. And I just don't get it. Maybe we cut him. Well, I was going to say maybe we cut him down to like eight issues, but I'm pretty sure that Batman story was like six issues, right? The fucking one where he went to London or whatever. Yeah. Detective, whatever the detective. Uh, and that just that wasn't good from the start. I feel like um, I don't know, man. I don't know. I I don't care for this book anymore. I think we have one more issue after this, right? I'm interested to see yeah. where it's going to end. But it's not going to end on a, like this story's over. It's gonna they're gonna do another season. I feel like. I think so. Yeah. Um. And I just don't care. I just I, you know. And it's unfortunate, man, because like these books have been good. Like Vampires was good. Ended horribly, in my opinion. I thought vampires was garbage. Um, and But it sucks because it was good. Like I, I was on for the ride and then the ending was garbage. You know, it's like going on a roller coaster. And then the last like two minutes is just a straight line. Like that's what it is. And it's just yeah, like, come on, 100%. Man. Yeah. yeah. So um, I don't know. But was it worse than was it worse than 136? Says so here's the thing, Clay. You said this is not the worst Zdarsky book you've read. So uh, we're moving on to Batman 136 right now, ladies and gentlemen. This, if you're, if you read the reviews on Twitter, people love this book. If you've read reviews anywhere else, they don't like it. Well, correction. Um, if you've read reviews on Twitter, everybody loves one page of this. Yeah, book. true. Um, and that's it. That uh, the praise on this book is all from one page. Is is all I'm saying. Um, nobody's yeah. made any comments on anything else, um, which tells me, hey, Chip, you're writing the wrong story. Yeah. I want to give a quote from Batman News, which we are not affiliated with. We are Batman News Weekly. Um, we are different places, but I know people know of Batman News. This is their review because I talked about this on Twitter, and I don't know if you ever feel like this, Clay. There are times when I think that Maybe I judge things too harshly, or I think maybe I'm the only one that thinks like this. And granted, if you go to our Discord, it's that's not the case. There's a lot of people that hate this Batman run. Um, yeah. But there's a lot of people that don't always agree with us, our opinions either. But there are times when I do find myself, I'm like, maybe I'm just like, maybe I'm just an old man. 
and I, I'm just judge. I'm I, I'm one of those people now, right? Like I'm an old timer. I don't like anything, yada yada. But I always feel like I've always based my opinions on the writing, like good writing, like good writing yeah. wins over anything. Uh, what was a movie that I didn't care about recently? I didn't care about Guardians 3, but I left liking it. I was like, yeah, it was yeah. a good film. Um, Spider-Verse, I almost didn't even go watch it because I was just like, eh, this is a Spider-Man movie. It is what it is. Like, I wasn't like super like, oh, hey, Clay, I bought our ticket fucking three months ago. You know, it wasn't like that. I was yeah. just like, oh, yeah, hey, uh, I can go Friday. Uh, you know, it was like very like quick. Went fucking love the film. You know, good yeah. writing always wins. So like when I judge like this harshly, I do think that there is a perception of like, oh, Juice just, uh, you know, judges Batman harshly, period, because he has a particular Batman he wants to read. Mark Wade is not the Batman I want to read, but it's good, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, like, I always judge it in the stance of writing. I don't think this is good. But I felt a little bit better when I saw somebody, I don't even know in this world, Batman News, write this article about Batman. I just want to read the start of it, because I think this is kind of how I feel about a lot of stuff, too. They say... This is such a frustrating run. Not only have the first two arcs been very disappointing in the terms of quality, but also it's been very derivative of older runs and other stories. Uh, hello, I've said many a times that Zdarsky is just taking stuff from other runs. Um, it's a real chore to get through these issues, and I'm afraid this, I'm afraid this one is not any different. Uh, so those that want a quick recommendation, don't buy this book. To those that, who want to read this review, Let's have a look. So um, pretty strong words from Batman News there and stuff that we've said on this podcast as well. Everything Zdarsky is doing has been done. Like yeah. he's not bringing anything new to this story. Something after I read this issue, Batman's just back in Gotham. No conversation, no hints at what the fuck happened with Failsafe. Yeah, I thought nothing. Gotham was taken over by Failsafe. How are people just walking freely? Batman just showed up. He's okay. There's no cleanup that needs to be done. Everything's just hunky-dory. Back to normal. Yeah. Makes no sense. Um, I was also kind of thinking, and and I will, like, I'll jump to conclusions at time. Like, we've said it on this podcast. We kind of think it's stupid that Batman didn't even try to confirm Penguin's death, right? I think it's yeah. kind of dumb. To play devil's advocate, he pretty much almost instantly got attacked by Felsafe. And so I'm like, all right, he didn't have time. He was getting his ass beat. His friends were getting their ass beat. He went to Atlantis for two weeks. That's when everything fucking got went away. Then he got zapped into another multiverse. So he he hasn't had time to do this stuff. I also thought it was kind of weird in this issue. He meets the Penguin's kids, and he kind of already knows them. And he's like this and that. And I guess you would just have to comic book assume that he probably already knew Penguin had kids. Well, it... I will I will hold that comment back just because yeah. he when he does face them mm -hmm. like when he fights the son of penguin yeah he doesn't know how like strong or fast that he is so it's Fair. like he's meeting him for the first time yeah um so i think that it's more so like the bat family knew of them and their workings because they of course have been watching them yeah. and then they just shared the intel with with batman i can headcanon that um yeah see and my problem is because like we have to do a lot of headcanon here right you would yeah. think the bat family would headcanon them checking up on penguin see it's like when you have to do the headcanon you it's like we're picking and choosing at this point which a lot of people on twitter do and Holy and shit. let's let's say it as is uh head cannon is just another way of giving an excuse to the writer yes that, that's 100 yes. what it is um and some of these excuses can be excused can be very much valid uh and some of them are just kind of lazy um with this we've had chip for a year now it's june it's a year um, yeah, well, he, um, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Did he skip a month? Because this is only, what, 11 issues? What, 125? It's been, so 135 would be 10 issues. Oh, this is 136. It's 11, 11 issues. So, yeah. about a year. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we, we've had about a year of Batman. Um, and I have not learned anything new from Batman. Yeah. 
there has been no development of the Bat family. Mm -mm. There has not been anything that has changed Batman forever. Got his hand cut off, Clay. Other than getting his hand cut off. Yeah. Which, oh, and Duran Rock can come and go whenever he wants. I like it's. Well, that's the backup story. Yeah, yeah. I fucking and, hate and, that backup story. And we'll story. get yeah. yeah. Backup made no sense whatsoever. Yeah. Um, and it may be because we haven't been reading it. And I was just reading this one part of it. But... No, this is a brand new backup though. This is the first this... time. The it Jesus uh because remember there wasn't a backup in the last issue because uh, Tim Drake shows up at the end of that book. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah so yeah. yeah, this is a brand new story. So anyways, go on with the review of it. But I'm like, I just think that we shouldn't be looking at the fact that it's just Batman. Yeah. Um, For sales. Mm -hmm. We should be looking at reception. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because wasn't it reception that got King off the book? Yeah. The book was selling. You yeah. can't say that it wasn't selling. The only time you could say it wasn't selling was the tail end with nightmares. Yeah. And I want to say, I don't know if it picked up during city of Bane or not. Um, Cause I know nightmares was when it started to fall. It started to fall yeah. after the wedding stuff. Cause people felt burned. Yeah. Um, and so like that was understandable. Uh, nightmares was slow. I will even as a King fan say, I agree with that. I, cause I will always harp in on, he should have showed where Batman was that whole time. Just at yeah. the very end of every book. He should have done that. Uh, and he didn't do that. Um, but City of Bane, I thought, had a lot going on for it, and it might have picked up a little bit at that point, but I could be wrong. I'd have to look at the numbers. Um, but, but yeah, it was but, definitely falling off. But here, I am seeing maybe one, like, people are talking about one panel mm -hmm. or one page of every issue. Yeah. They're not talking about the series of events. They're not saying how much Chip has done for the character of Batman. Yeah. There isn't a longevity conversation going on about Batman in Chip's run. Yeah. When when Tom King was, and I'm just saying this because he was the most recent Batman writer compared mm -hmm. to Williamson, who was only there for a short time. I love how you just completely forgot about Tynan. <laughs> yeah, but I'm. <laughs> yeah. You mean long term? Long term. I mean, Tynan was there for a few years. Tynan was there for about two years. Two? Two and three? And a half years. Maybe three, yeah. Maybe three. Holy shit. Because he, um, wait, because so we know Williamson had four issues. So uh, I think Tynan finished at 118. Mm -hmm. And um, well, I guess he did two weekly. Uh, King got off at what, 85? Yeah. So from 85 to 118, he was there. So about maybe two years, yeah. Yeah, two so. years. Um, we'll even go, even go Tynan. Tynan mm -hmm. King. Doesn't matter. Um, these two they at least had the the conversation of like oh what's going to happen after this what's mm -hmm. going to happen after this what's going to happen after this why did this happen to this character at this time yeah like yeah and there was a lot and same thing with with Tynan there was a lot of like the one panel conversations mm -hmm. like, oh wow ooh, you know all of that stuff was happening with Tynan as well because I think that was very much an editor's note like hey we got to get people wowed by this book. Yeah. Um, in those two runs, King and, and Tynan, there was still a steady conversation about Batman. Yeah. I am not seeing a steady conversation about Batman in comics. Yeah. People have Batman conversations all the time. But yeah. In comics, I am not seeing that conversation go for Chip's run. Yeah. No. Um, I haven't got on the uh, Reddit in a long time to see what people are thinking of this run. I have got on once in a while, like uh, once before. And somebody was like, is this run worth reading? And I think I did comment on that um, saying yeah. like, you know, what do you want shock and awe? Or do you want good story? If you want shock and awe, read this story, read this run. Um, if you want good story, don't read this run. That's basically what I said. Uh, when I, when Tynan was uh, reading, I saw a lot of people being like, bring back Tom King, which was a very interesting thing, which is something I said was going to happen. Uh, after after realizing Tynan wasn't great at writing Batman. Uh, I don't see anybody saying bring anybody back for Sadarsky. I just don't hear people talking about the book. And I think that's worse, right? I yeah. think the, what is the quote? It was like, long as they're talking about you, like if they're not talking about you, that's when you should worry, right? Because yeah. if 
if somebody's hate reading your shit, they're still they're still reading it. Uh, you know? What's the phrasing is uh, any press is good press, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, and with Chip, like it's it's the idea. It's it's the argument of binge and week to week, right? Mm -hmm. You go week to week. You have a conversation going on. You have a binge. You have a conversation going on for a day, maybe two. Yeah. Chip's conversation stops in the same day. Yeah. Like it, it like it, it's just like, oh, this happened in the book. Cool. Okay, move on. Like, yeah. let's talk about another book. Like yeah. in Tynan, I still think there was big enough books that were connecting to other stories as well and other characters and like doing things um that we personally didn't like. Mm -hmm. But it was keeping the conversation going. Yeah. Um same thing with King. Kept the conversation going. Chip needs to keep the conversation going to keep his story relevant. And yeah. the, his story isn't relevant because as the comment as the reviewer said that you quoted, like these stories have been done before. Mm -hmm. We've seen it before. There's the commentary was 2 years ago, 3 yeah. years ago. 10 years ago like yeah. that's where the original commentary for all that is that's why we don't have much to say on it like yeah it's 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 hard to to really look at this this run and be like hey like i need this to keep going like yeah. no i don't i need a new writer yeah that article continued saying that this book was very disjointed and uh felt like a filler episode uh because they they just need to get to the bat cat event right um, and one of those things is probably the worst conversation or one of the worst. I mean, actually, Teeny Howard had a pretty bad conversation between Batman and Catwoman and Valmont. Um, but this is there's this weird uh, issue where Batman finds Catwoman, who is now having a secret identity or she's trying to hide like who Penguin, she as she mentions. Yeah. And um, he's all like, what's going on? And she's like, oh, look, you're here. And they have this conversation about, like, you broke out of prison. She's like, I heard you were jumping through universes or whatever. And he was like, ah, something like that. And I don't know. It's it's a very bad conversation. It's not good. I haven't heard anybody say that this is a good conversation. But Batman essentially breaks down during this conversation, which I just found it laughable. Um, because she reveals that penguin is alive because she he was like why are you hiding your identity or whatever and she's like well maybe i just wanted a fresh new start oh because they're arguing about like why she broke out of prison and he she's like are you gonna take me back he's like no but i could have helped you you denied all my help and she was like well it's because i'm a murderer and he's like ah it doesn't matter you did it to save my life i could have got you out legally with my help yada yada and she's like maybe i just wanted a fresh new start like penguin and he's like what and she's like oh yeah penguin's alive and he's like <gasps> Like Batman just like has a fucking breakdown that Selena lied to him. Not necessarily that Penguin's alive, but that she would lie to him. He was like, we're not supposed to keep secrets from each other. Yeah. It's like he was fucking 15. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, what? And somebody tried to say, this is a point of view and I will respect people's point of views. I just don't agree with it. Um, Somebody on Twitter, I was having this conversation. Their point of view was they're like, this was their their analogy was imagine a cup of full water the batman being lied to was the drop that sent it spilling out and i was like okay because he's been through so much right he went through the multiverse he got his hand chopped off all that kind of uh, shit i don't I agree with it i can believe it to a certain extent yeah because again bruce has always known who selena was yeah like the whole point in king's run was hey I know you're going to go steal those diamonds, but I will always go put it back. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's their uh, cat and mouse game. Exactly. Like in for him to just nonchalantly believe that she would never lie to him again for some reason. That's yeah. stupid. Um, I love the idea that he didn't break down after she murdered somebody. He broke down because she lied. Yeah. And like, Again, he he like spills over himself in this conversation, he's, and like she's trying to like say something. Mm -hmm. He's like, "I was in another universe. Yeah, like, there was there was another you, and I couldn't help but love her too." And it's just like, dude, yeah, like I I I can't, I just can't. 
um, which is a hilarious phrase that Abby uses all the time. I just mm -hmm. can't. Um, this Bruce, it like I get it. I get what Ship is trying to do. He's trying to show how much Batman loves Selena. Yeah, and like, oh, he she's the only one to break down all these walls for Bruce, right? Mm -hmm. Um, it's just not the Batman that we've known since we've even started this podcast. Yeah. You know, um, there's no consistency with the four different writers that we've read in the four years of this podcast. Mm -hmm. This Batman strays the most out yeah. of all of those. Yeah, I agree. it's like, why? Why? This read as something that needed to be forced to make the event happen. And it is the worst thing, like a lie. That's really what we're going to go off of, like especially when a character like it, Selena almost lies to Batman to flirt at this point. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's just what they do. And Batman's like, oh, you're full of shit. And it's just that kind of relation to some people would say it's toxic, but it's, it's not like Joker and Harley. You know what I mean? Like Batman's not fucking beating her and shit like that. Anything along those lines. It's just like, she lies, but you know, she thinks she's outsmarting me. She's not I'll fucking, I already paid for that diamond. I knew she was going to steal it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, it's just very interesting. It's it's an interesting dynamic between them. But yeah, he's all like, she betrayed me. And she's like, my God, your life, Bruce. She's like, I'm not the, uh, I'm not some other Selena. I'm me. And I didn't know, uh, I, I didn't know you created some damn robot to kill yourself. And Batman's like, I didn't know that either. And like, it's just so shit. And she's like, oh, and you think I keep secrets. And then she runs off. And I'm like, is this going to be what starts the war? This this crazy war that needs to happen that's going to change Red Hood's life for some reason? <laughs> like, Batman goes to the family. We're going to start a war in Gotham. Selena yeah. lied to me. Yeah, uh, right. Uh, and Damon's like, uh, Father, I lie to you every Sunday. Like, yeah. Like, it's like, what? <laughs> like, what? What is it? Like, it. it the grounds for this war again the same thing that the person commented on uh chip's substack it's just like i don't believe that whatever they decide is going to be the catalyst for this war mm -hmm. is going to be believable and or like worth it yeah you know I, I I just can't see there being a world where I'm like, oh, this very much like I can see why the entire Bat family would just stop everything that they're doing uh, in order to help Batman take down Selina. Yeah, like, it's 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 not it's not going to be believed. Yeah. And so the, the, the theme that they want you to believe in this book is that Batman isn't right in his mind. And there is this moment where he's talking to Zern and Ra because he's meditating. Um, uh, Chip is Chip is so weird. He has such a hard-on for Zern and Ra and doesn't understand Zern and Ra at all, which is fucking wild because he's having Bruce, like, talk to him now. Now, granted, you can say this is, like, a mental break that Bruce is having. That's why he's talking to him. Zern and Ra, from my understanding, and I've just read Grant Morrison's run recently, was to be... Uh, back up Batman in case Bruce's mind was ever altered or like ever like um, what is the compromised. word? Compromised. Compromised. And that's when Zern Ra would come out. But now it's like Bruce is talking to him. Like it's almost it's like as if it's a, it, it's almost like a, a split personality yeah. disorder yeah. Uh, that he's given him. Um, and like what I'm scared of is like is there now going to be a split personality of Bruce and another Batman yeah. and Zern Ra and all of these other things? And like, then people will be like, oh, well, you know, Batman's just as insane as everybody else that he fights. And like, I'm, I, I don't need that conversation. Yeah. It's um, stupid. Yeah, I don't need that at all. It's like tying in saying there's three different Batman or three different Bruce Waynes or whatever. Um, I don't need that conversation either. Uh, here's the thing though Zdarsky's just not. Like, uh, uh, to play devil's advocate, I'm like, okay, Bruce has been going through a lot, so maybe he isn't right mentally, and that's why Zern Raw is peeking out, and this is what Zadarsky is trying to... This is trying to be Zadarsky's thing, right? He's trying to be like, nobody's ever told that story. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, 
you're not doing it very well because you also told a backup where Bruce corrected everything Zuren Ra did because he didn't like what Zuren Ra was going to be. So he corrected it. We don't kill. We don't do this. Then Zuren Ra still made a fail safe to kill Batman. Like yeah. it, Zer, he's not even do. He's like contradicting his own writing at this point. And I'm just like, it doesn't make sense. And is Zuren Ra when in that backup story, Batman got him under control. So I don't see how he's able to talk to him now. And it's never been how it is. Like Zuren Ra, from my understanding, when Grant Morrison do it, he wasn't talking to Bruce. He was just Zuren Ra. He yeah. is like, that's another personality. And then when he goes back to normal, he's Bruce Wayne. That's it. So like, I don't, I don't understand it. But so they're trying to tell you that he's basically having a mental break here because when he gets back from crying with Selena, he's driving home, gets home. Nobody's in the cave. Everything's all dark. He goes upstairs and it's fucking Christmas morning. And the whole family's in the kitchen making pancakes together. Everybody's having a good time. Jason Todd has his white streak back in his hair for some reason. Yeah. And Barbara and Nightwing show up together and they're like, hey, yeah, come on, Bruce. We're going to have dinner and all this jazz. They sit down to a big old feast. Everybody's having a good time and they're just chatting away. And then everybody catches on fire because we realize it's in Bruce's mind. And it's it's supposed to symbolize like this is what he cares about and he's going to lose it all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, like his like his world is on fire. Yeah. Um, literally uh, in in this in this concept. And he's like, oh, how do I save the ones I love? And it's just like, again, a lot of people for this in particular issue, the issue where you see everybody in the kitchen yeah, um, making the pancakes, getting everything for this feast. That's what everybody's freaking crazy about on Twitter. Yeah. It's like, OK, I really like the art in this one page. I like like I think this would be a great part in a different story. Yeah. But in this story where it's like, oh, it's all dramatic and you're doing this and you're trying to convince me this, you know, how much Batman loves Selena and all of this other stuff. And then to put this like it's supposed to convey like how peaceful the Bat family is and how in chaos Batman is. It's yeah. just like, yeah, I don't care. Like in this story, I don't care. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it's funny. Death in the family uh, got it reminded me of this scene. Cause if I'm not mistaken, they're all sitting around a table and do they catch on fire? I don't remember. They all catch. They, I know they all have their faces cut off or like they make you think that, but I know there's like a lot of smoke. I don't know if they catch on fire. I um, think one does. I don't know if all of them do. Yeah. I don't know. I'd have to, I'm trying to pull it up, but of course when you look at images, you don't get that one image you want or like the full scene, you know? So, um, but yeah, uh, so yeah, Batman is going crazy. And I get, is this going to be the reason why he goes to war? I think Zuren Ra is going to be the one leading that war, apparently. I I just don't know Chip's fascination. Like, did he read that when he was a child? Like, I don't, I don't know. And he just saw the purple, yellow Zuren Ra, and he was just like, that's the greatest thing I've ever seen, which I could understand that. But I just, I don't get it. Um. But then there's a backup story, Clay. His backup story is what people told me would bring everything together. It would make everything make sense. And it's a must-read backup story. His backup story was fucking ass. Like, so garbage. we see Bruce go into the Batcave. And yeah. he's looking up... Um, he, so Riddler is is out and about, and he's like going to the Batcave, assumingly gonna try to you know figure out one of the riddles or whatever. In the middle of looking at the monitors, you see his dialogue bubble turn purple. Yeah, and then with no dialogue, he walks into this lower part of the cave. He grabs the purple cowl, and you see failsafe all mangled and uh, not operational. Yeah, this is now Zuren Ra. Um, mm -hmm. he is, you know, fixing him back up. They're having a conversation like, Hey, what's your prime objective? What are you supposed to do? Blah, blah, all of this stuff. Right. And Zorn's all like, okay, well, if that's the case, fight me, try to take down Batman. Yeah. And they spar. And this is essentially showing you, Oh, Zorn raw is building the perfect 
you know, uh, a doomsday device for a Batman. Mm -hmm. This, like, I knew this from the story of Failsafe. Yeah. Like, this doesn't give me any new information mm -hmm. whatsoever. Like, okay, it gives me an insight on how he did it. Okay. Yeah. It's not something I needed. This yeah. doesn't bring anything new to the table of the conversation of failsafe at all. Like you, you, you see Zern Raw take down failsafe. Yeah. You see him again, get him disconnected. He takes off the cowl. He goes up to the monitor and then it's Bruce Wayne again. And Bruce Wayne acts like nothing happened. Yeah. Um, so one Zern Raw just comes out of nowhere. Which again is not what that personality is supposed to be. His yeah. not his mind isn't corrupted in this scene. Like he's not fighting anybody. He didn't get bonked on the head or anything like that. His he's not compromised. But is Zadarsky gonna try to say, oh, his mind's always been compromised? Is that what he's gonna try to push? Well, I think like depending on when this story takes place, the idea has always been that Zuren Ra believed that Batman's mind was compromised due to the Bat family. Oh, like, like the, the fact we're going to push. Yeah, it is it, it, oh, like, I feel like it always has been. I'm pretty sure. Like, I don't know about that what Zuren Ra said in like I, oh, when they were in, fighting in, in the, this run. Yeah. 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 He was saying the soldiers, but that, that, that felt like it came out of nowhere too, though. But you that's what I mean. mean. Like, yeah, like, People will use that argument. They're yes, like, oh, Zdarsky showed you like yeah. what, how and why he's doing this. Like the idea of Batman being compromised for something that is universally a good thing. Yeah. Is stupid. Yeah, I agree. And again, it doesn't make sense because he showed us in a backup story that he corrected Zurin Ra. He corrected the Zurin Ra flaws. Because yeah. his mom came up and his mom is the main reason why Zuren Rock can't win is because she was like, don't listen to this guy. He has no face. Like, he is just a, a guy. You are in control. And so, again, it, it, he's contradicting himself. I don't like that Zuren Rock just showed up out of nowhere. Um, and then he goes and he tries to make Fel safe. And it's just, it's dumb. Here's a... This is the thing I, I feel like some of these writers, I mean, obviously Zdarsky read Morrison's run, right? This is, this is the only way he would be so enthralled by Zern Rob. How the, the home run was right there, Clay. All he had to do was go back and read the Zern Raw original story, right? And all you do is once that story was done or whatever happened, is you being like, you being like later that night or later that day or whatever, you just have a side story that spins off of the original Zurin Ra where he starts building this thing. And he's all like, what if Batman got too strong? What if Batman did that? You know what I mean? Like he just beat, I think it was Dr. Death or, you know, whatever his, and it wasn't Dr. Death. Um, the, the hand, I forget what his, the guy's name was. Oh my God. The black mask. It's not black mask. It's fucking something. I'm forgetting the main guy that's in Batman rest in peace. But anyways, um, you know, he beats him, he destroys him, maybe he beats Joker or whatever, and you have, I think it's a black glove, I think that's what it's called, but uh, you just, you build off of that story, you just have Zuren Ra, who's already in that state of mind, that's what he glove. builds, yeah, black glove, he builds failsafe at that point, and then you're just like, oh, that Zuren Ra must have thought of that at that point, you know, yeah. and that's it, that would make much more sense, because it keeps intact, how Zuren Ra was compromised at the time, and while he was in that Batman state, he decided, oh, I need to create something that would destroy Batman if Batman ever broke free, you know? Um, maybe it doesn't make sense at that point because that Zuren Ra was like, I'll kill you, you know, to Joker and everything. But still, you could have tied it all together. And instead, Zuren Ra just comes out whenever he wants. He's like Two-Face. It's just like, oh, yeah, split personality. Look at me. Yay. Um... I don't like this. Uh, I personally have never been a huge fan of Zuren Ra. I think the name's kind of stupid, too. I don't know if it means something. Uh, maybe it does. Maybe they said that in the last book. I just didn't pay attention. Or in Grant Morrison's run. I just think it's a dumb a dumb character. Um, but sometimes those dumb things last, right? Like, it's just what I happens. think it was Parker a Pellin. cool... I think it was a cool concept at the time. 
Yeah. That has turned into something that is really dumb. Yeah, I, I would agree with that statement. Um, because yeah, the, man. I, I think for, for me, like it's it's very scary to be like, oh, I'm gonna create a character for a very large company like DC Comics, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna create them for this purpose, but then it's free reign for anybody and everybody to do whatever they want with that character afterward. Yeah. Like that it's yeah. kind of terrifying. Yeah, it's uh it is pretty crazy, but I don't know, man. Um, I think Zadarsky's taking time off for the next two months or something like that because he's not writing the terror issues, I guess. Oh, uh, probably, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know because that's what a lot of people were saying that this is the last book until the event starts. Um, All right, we're going to get real Batman stories from now on. Yeah. Uh, for at least would, the next two months. <laughs> I, it depends on who's writing them, though, right? I think uh, Mark Wade. So okay, so maybe they'll maybe they'll be good. Well, hit or miss though, because when he does the magic stuff, it's just like oh, a little too yeah. crazy. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, I mean, dude, there hasn't been good Batman. It feels like in a long time. So um, that kind of sucks. I mean, yeah, we got World's Finest, but that's kind of a team up book. You know, you should be able to knock that out of the park with the limited of Batman that you have in it. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of it for the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Clay, you got anything going on this week, man? Um. This week, I got nothing on the tables, but next week, again, we are seeing The Flash on Monday. We will, of course, keep everything hush-hush until uh, the... for We may do a separate review and then release that later. I'm not entirely sure. We haven't talked about it, but uh, it's going to be four days before our actual recording. Uh, So I'm not sure how we're going to do that. Um, But uh this next upcoming week i am finally back at star wars alliance so keep an eye on that it's gonna be a very lengthy first episode back a lot of news has come out and of course we are doing our book review of uh path of vengeance so keep an eye out for that as well nice nice um i at the moment will be streaming most likely tomorrow barring anything uh happening that i can't um, so definitely come by and check that out on Twitch or YouTube and, uh, yeah, I'm just, uh, working on stuff like always. So, uh, just definitely keep an eye, come join the discord. Also hit that subscribe button on YouTube if you haven't, um, because we are trying to get to a thousand subscribers. Um, uh, and yeah, we kind of want to hit that goal. It would be nice, but that is going to be it. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, he is fanboy clay. I am juice Wayne. And remember Batman is awesome. Batman. News weekly.